Am I the jerk for making my husband fly coach while I flew first class? My husband's company recently chose him to attend a conference in Miami. They chose just him and a few of his co-workers out of a ton of candidates, so it was quite the honor. The company told them that they were allowed to bring their spouses or partners, but that they wouldn't be springing for plane tickets for us. So if they wanted to bring us, they'd have to buy tickets out of their own pockets. My husband asked me if I wanted to go, and I emphatically told him that I did. I'd never been to Florida in my life, and I thought it would be a fun trip. He told me, great. But when we went to the website to buy tickets, he asked if I'd be okay with flying coach, even though he'd be flying first class on the way there and coach on the way home. I asked him why we couldn't just fly together and he replied, first class is just so expensive. I feel bad, but we just can't afford it, especially if you want to go out and have fun in Miami. The flight's only a few hours. This really, really bothered me. I understood that a first class ticket for me would strain our budget a bit, but what kind of man lives up in first class while his wife sits in coach? I asked him just that and he responded, Come on, I'm taking you along on my work trip. I earned my first class seat by working hard. It's my reward But I insisted that if we truly couldn't afford a first class seat for me We could have it would have hurt a little but we could have that he as a gentleman should give up his seat for me We argued but he ultimately agreed to give me his seat. We had a good time in miami But he's been a little mad at me since saying that he earned his first class seat, That it was free and cost us nothing unlike my plane ticket and that I should have just let him enjoy what he'd earned instead of guilting him out of it I think he's being a baby and that he should have put his wife's comfort above his own Especially since he made the choice to be cheap. We're very close to his parents So we've taken this argument to them for mediation, but they're split His father agrees with me that he wasn't being a gentleman while his mother thinks that he earned his first class seat and that I should have let him have it. So I'll ask all of you, am I the jerk? Yes, obviously you muppet. Do you know how expensive first class plane tickets are? They're a total waste of money in my opinion. The fact that he's bought you one in the first place is very kind of him. Just enjoy the holiday. You pretty much cheated him out of something he earned for your personal enjoyment. You're a terrible person. Simple as that. Am I the butthole for not treating my wife like an equal parent by telling her she has no say in the way I bond with my son and also calling her homophobic? When I, a 37-year-old man, was 17, I got my then-girlfriend, who was 16, pregnant with twin boys. Her parents didn't want the babies to ruin her future, so they said that I had to either take them or give them up for adoption, because she was not raising them. I wanted to give them up, but my parents told me not to. For the first seven years of my boys' lives, I didn't act like a father and was more like a big brother. They knew I was their father, but we never bonded like father and sons. When I was ready to move out, I wanted to do it without them. But my dad let me know it was my responsibility, so I had to take them. I didn't want to at first, but I'm glad it happened. Then we started bonding as father and sons. I started loving them and their love for me increased. I remember the three of us would sit on the couch to watch movies. One on my left, one on my right, while I wrapped my arms around them. They put their heads on my chest and I often kissed their forehead. We've been doing this since they were seven. I met my current wife five years ago. My kids were 15. We married three years ago after we welcomed our daughter, a four-year-old now. Now my wife saw me doing this with my kids when we watched movies and never said anything. My kids are no longer living with us because they left for college, but they come to see me every now and then. My boys are now 20, but they still like to put their heads on my chest while I wrap my arms around them. They do it every time they visit and I'm watching TV. My son, Liam, visited me two weeks ago. He came out to me as gay and introduced me to his boyfriend. I don't care how my kids live their sexuality or who they love. I love them no matter what. I just want them to be happy and I don't feel any different. And it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable to hug them or kiss his forehead, but it seems that my wife is a little uncomfortable. My son visited me again last Wednesday. Since he was here two weeks ago, this is the first time he's been officially out with us. I was watching Red with my daughter. She was on my left. Then my son Liam arrived. He was tired and sat on my right. He put his head on my shoulder while I wrapped my arm around him. Then I kissed his forehead and said, good to have you back, buddy. We went to sleep and the next day my wife told me that it made her feel uncomfortable, me hugging and kissing my son, and asked me not to do it again. While she doesn't mind me doing it with Lucas, my other son, who is straight, she doesn't want me to do it with Liam. I told her that she has no business being in my relationship with my sons. I also called her homophobic. She accused me of not treating her like an equal parent to my sons. And then I said... That's okay, because you're not. My brother says I should understand this, because it's a big change for her, a son coming out. 
But seriously, I think there's nothing to get used to. It's neither her nor my problem who my son loves. So, am I in the wrong? All right, in my opinion, there is no way you're in the wrong here. If anyone's in the wrong, it's your wife for sexualizing something that doesn't need to be sexualized. What is wrong with a dad kissing his son on the forehead? At any age, it doesn't matter. Clearly, it's been a normal part of your guys' relationships ever since your children were born. And for her to say something like this and say that it feels weird when you do it with one son who is gay, but not the other who is straight, that is just straight up homophobia. Simple as that. I would love to know if you do the same thing with your daughter, how your wife reacts to that because that is going to be telling as to whether or not she is actually homophobic if she doesn't care about you hugging or kissing your daughter i mean i say kissing it's just kissing on the forehead it's not a sexual thing ever then that proves that she's homophobic if she cares about that as well then i don't know it's still weird i still think she has issues just my opinion though my husband refused to answer my calls while i was in labor and my brother played a horrible prank now my husband is furious i won't cut him off my husband and i got into a fight prior to my daughter's birth a week ago when he casually suggested a paternity test for our daughter when she was born. To be clear, this was completely out of the blue, with no wanting or reason. I'm a homebody who works remotely, with no male friends other than my brother. I told him that he was accusing me of infidelity, and he said he just wanted to be sure, and he kept bringing it up until I told him, after three days of him asking, and the stress starting to make me physically ill, that I didn't want to talk to him, and I left for my brother's house. I called him while I was gone and tried to work it out, but he refused. After all of this, I went home the next day to grab some things while he was at work, and I went into labor. I called him 16 times before calling my brother, who called him another half a dozen times himself while on the way to pick me up, and then on the way to the hospital. It was a horrible and traumatic birth. I started crowning in the car and the doctor delivered my daughter in the back of my brother's van because I was too far along to move me before rushing me in when I kept bleeding. It was horrible. I hated it all. My brother's wife, who was a nurse, even told me she honestly thought I wouldn't make it. I also opted for a hysterectomy as it came to that or something more dangerous. I only ever wanted one or none, but my husband wants a large family. I'm trying to bond with my daughter, but it's been hard. The point is that during this, while I was returning from surgery, 10 hours after I first called, my husband finally responded and asked why I hadn't answered his call. However, my brother had my phone and was so angry that he said, this is Opie's brother. I'm at the hospital, she didn't make it, and turned it off. My husband rushed over and got there when I'd just woken up and started shouting until the security forced him out. And then he didn't get to see our daughter until the next day because I was mostly asleep and apparently they needed my signature to allow him back. My sister-in-law thinks it was horribly cruel, but that he deserved it. But my brother stands by his prank and says that he only gave my husband 10 minutes of the same fear that he had felt at my side for over 10 hours. Whenever he sees my husband, he also keeps telling him that I nearly died because we waited for him. My brother used to be mostly indifferent to my husband, but now he absolutely hates him. You can see it in his face whenever my husband enters the room. And my brother's been visiting a lot because he doesn't trust my brother to care for me while I'm still healing. My husband is furious that he won't apologize and that I won't make him. And he yelled at me when I said that the only reason my brother had my phone was because he wasn't there. I'm trying to be empathetic. I know he feels guilty. I've spoken to my therapist and she says the apathy I'm feeling is likely general and not solely focused on him from the lingering shock from the trauma. But she didn't say much about the prank. My mother-in-law has been texting me to say that my family is horribly cruel for the prank and that I should go no contact with my brother and now my husband is saying the same. I just don't know what to do. I'm not in a good headspace. It's been hard to be in the same room with my husband and I've been sleeping as a result in the guest room with my daughter. He brought up the paternity once more and I just exhaustedly told him to either get out of my face or go stay with his mum if he's planning on stressing me out even more. I really don't feel myself. And yes, I'm taking the likelihood of PPD seriously and my therapist who has suggested that it may be PTSD too. However, I just want more opinions because I just don't know.
Wow, this is a very complex one. I mean, there's so much going on here. It's a lot to unpack. First of all, guys, get in the comments yourself if you're watching on YouTube. Let me know where you stand on this one. Interesting one, that's for sure. First of all, we've got to talk about the prank here. Was it too far? I'm going to go ahead and say no. I actually think it was justified. And I would go as far as to say that your brother's reasoning was logical. Like, I'm sorry, but the husband has done so much wrong here. And I think it's fair that he got to experience the pain that you, OP, and your brother were feeling. It was only for 10 minutes. Yes, it was truly a horrific thing to do, but so is not showing up to your own child's birth. Your wife's pregnancy, like, it's, it's mental. Uh, it really is. And we've got to remember that all of this originally stemmed from your husband wanting a paternity test. That alone is crazy. What does it say about this man that just one week before your daughter's born, he is demanding this? I'm sorry. But this is all his fault, really. And I know that what your brother did is crazy. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's justified. Now, none of that really matters because what I'm about to show you is an update to this story. That's right. Opie has written a conclusion and told us how this story has ended. It's mental. Here we go. So I don't think this will be something we can come back from. I just don't think I'll be able to heal with him because there's no way he didn't know it was me calling and he still hasn't told me why he didn't answer. I know I thought I wouldn't decide right away, but I actually don't want to forget how terrible it was waiting on him, thinking he couldn't possibly leave me like that, no matter how angry he was. I took the time to think of that moment before it all went down, and just how grossly betrayed and scared and alone I felt while the contractions were hitting, and I was on my knees trying to breathe through the pain while waiting on the phone while it rang through. And I just don't think there's any coming back from that. I would not want my daughter to think it's okay to stay with a man who destroyed her trust that way either. I'll be contacting an attorney and I'll be meeting with them in the coming weeks. We had a prenup, so it hopefully won't be too hellish, I hope. I feel like this situation became even clearer when my friend asked me if I'd still trust him as the one to sign off on my medical papers. And the reaction to that idea was visceral. I wouldn't and I want him to get off that legality as soon as possible, in fact. There are roommates I had in college that I would have trusted more. I would have never ignored so many calls from him consecutively unless I told him expressly that I was unavailable at a specific time. And even then, I feel good with my brother and sister-in-law here with me, especially so with her being a nurse and having been there through the birth. It's really helped us bond in a way that we'd never really had time to. I've also finally told my old friends about the baby and they're alternating to come and help me out for the next little while. None of this even touched on the paternity test, but I'll get it for the proceedings, I guess. So I guess he'll get what he wanted. Anyway, I'm safe and well, and my daughter is healthy and happy as a peach, and pretty much an angel who is happy to sleep peacefully anywhere and took to the boob with ease which is such a blessing because everything still hurts. Just making this decision has taken an odd weight off my shoulders and my sister-in-law has really been helping us bond. Anyway, thank you for letting me write this out. I'm not good at diaries or journals, but writing to people feels different and it's actually brilliant for the clarity of the situation. Even my therapist said that I seem clearer and calmer. So there we go. Uh, that has caused the ending of that relationship. Let me know in the comments if you think that was the right decision or not. Now it's interesting, OP's logic here, because usually you'd say, okay, let yourself calm down and calm down especially from those really angry thoughts that you had in the moment. But the difference here is that those angry thoughts and emotions are so key in this entire thing that you can't forget about them. And I actually massively understand what OP's done here. Thinking back to that moment and thinking how terrible it was and how you were in such a horrible and potentially life-threatening position almost because of your husband is reason enough to not forget about them and to, you know, put them in the forefront of your imagination and mind as you go on and make the decision about your future with this man. I think it's logical and I think you made the right decision. Let me know if you agree in the comments below. Wow, a crazy story. And so is this next one. Am I the butthole for not waking my partner up and causing him to miss a family trip? I am a 26 year old woman and me and my partner, a 28 year old man, have five daughters seven, six, four, and three years old, and also a five month old. For a long time, there's been an issue with him getting up to help with the kids in the morning. He thinks he should be able to sleep in on his days off work, while I think he should get up when the kids and I do or we should at least be alternating who lies in a bit. We've been seeing a therapist who has mentioned he should be helping more in the mornings. Recently, we had a family trip planned to the zoo with both of our parents, our sisters, and their kids. Previously, when we've gone out for the day, I've needed to shake my partner awake several times 
and he lies in bed while I get the kids ready. He'll finally get up five minutes before we leave as I shout at him that I'm getting in the car. I've mentioned to him that this is very frustrating as it's a lot of work getting the kids ready to go out and it's not fair to leave it up to me while he lies in bed. He'd apologize and promise that the next time he'd get up and help. The night before the trip, I told him I'd need him to be awake at 6.30 a.m. so we could get everyone ready to leave by 8. He said he set an alarm and we went to bed. My alarm went off at 6.30 a.m. and I got up while my partner kept sleeping. I decided I wasn't going to wake him this time and I continued getting the kids ready. At 8 a.m. he was still sleeping, so I loaded the kids in the car and we set off. We arrived at the zoo at 9.30 a.m. and his family asked where he was. I mentioned he was still in bed and chose not to come. At 10.15, I got a phone call from him asking where everyone was. I said we went to the zoo as planned and I waited for him to get up, but he never did. He got really mad and told me that I should have woken him up like I always do and that I caused him to miss the trip. He then called his mum and complained to her, who yelled at me in the middle of the zoo that I was being unfair and I should have given him a shake to let him know he needed to get up and that I was about to leave. My mother then jumped in and said it wasn't my responsibility to get him out of bed and he needed to take responsibility for himself. A few more words were exchanged and his family stalked off for the rest of the trip. I had a blast with my kids, parents, sister, and my nephews. When we got home, my partner started on me again about how I should have woken him up. So, am I the butthole for not waking him up and going without him? Now, a few things have come up that I just need to clarify. One, he wasn't always like this. When the oldest two were little, he was always up with them. He even got up before anyone else to cook breakfast before going off to work. We had to move in with his parents at one point, and that is where things started to change. His family are incredibly misogynistic. Dad works, then comes home, watches TV, and drinks beer, while his mum does everything else, including getting his dad up for work, etc. These beliefs seem to have rubbed off on him, and his mum is very quick to tell him that something is the woman's job. Two, he's seeing a therapist independently who has suggested some form of depression. Three, he's generally pretty good otherwise. He'll help with dinner, cleaning, putting the kids to bed, etc. So he's not entirely useless. Getting out of bed in the morning is a long-standing issue though. Now, just like the previous story, this has actually also been resolved. We have an update. The morning after this incident, my partner got out of bed when the kids did and took the older girls out for breakfast. Later, I asked him if he'd be willing to read the thread, and he agreed. He was very subdued afterwards, and didn't say much except for agreeing that he was the butthole. The next day, he took off work and saw his GP, and started on antidepressants, and we had a long talk. He was ashamed by how he was acting, and to see strangers comparing him to children. Those are some of the comments that were put on the first post. He cried when he realized how much he was letting everyone down, especially his daughters, who will grow up thinking that this is normal behavior. He confirmed that this all started when we lived with his parents a few years back. He left home at 17 to get away from his mother, and she told him he'd fail, as men needed women to look after them. He felt like a failure, so it was easy for his mother to feed him other ideas, and she'd also manipulate things I did to look like he was incompetent as a person. For example, I'd tell him to relax and handle the dishes, and his mother twisted it into me thinking that he was incompetent, so therefore he should just stop helping at all. He'd wake up feeling useless, and she'd managed to convince him that he was unhappy because I wasn't taking care of him the way a wife should. He decided to go no contact with her, which didn't go well. She cried and told him he was a horrible son for abandoning his mother, and that I was trying to control him by forcing him to do it. He blocked her, but she just used different numbers to continue calling him. After a week or so, he ended up changing his number, and we haven't heard from his family since. He brought up that he was unhappy at work, as it wasn't stimulating enough, but he felt like he couldn't leave. I offered to pick up some part-time work, but he said no. He talked to his boss and took some time off, and eventually quits. He spoke to my dad, who used some connections, and got him a good job at his company. The new job is a primarily work from home position, so he's able to help with the girls more, and has more free time. He's able to take the girls to school and watch them play while he works, which they all enjoy. Before he started the new job, he booked a trip for us to go to the snow for a week. We had a blast, and it was lovely to see him relaxed and happy and enjoying our girls and life. He's promised to be more honest about how he's feeling and our relationship has improved immensely. Thank you for everyone who gave judgment and advice as he says it really helped him see things more clearly. 
especially the toxic relationship with his mother. Well, that's good news. Um, unlike the story previous, this one actually has a happy ending of sorts, I guess. The guy realized that it was really his mother who kind of, you know, forced him to think these sort of things and was the reason for his terrible mood and depression. Sorted that out by getting rid of her and now your family's happy. Good stuff. I think unlike the last one, these actions, your husband's actions, weren't caused by himself. They weren't really him choosing to do these things obviously in the situation it was like he was not waking up on time but they were kind of pushed on him by his mum. whereas the story i read before the, the husband was the one who asked for the paternity test that was pretty clear so uh yeah it, it's a difference isn't it the first one was the man himself the second one probably his mother the first one ended badly and this one ended well good stuff am i the butthole for leaving my best friend and his friends stranded in an unfamiliar city so for background my best friend has gotten into going to these spartan races now spartan races are pretty much just endurance races with obstacles he and a small group of his friends have started going to local ones but recently heard about one in another state they wanted to go to and compete in but they didn't have anywhere to stay so they asked me if they could borrow my truck and trailer i have a tow behind camper for the weekend i said no i wasn't comfortable with them taking my truck and trailer but that i would drive them and the camper to their events we made the three hour trip and set everything up in the area where the race was taking place the next day i have a habit of leaving my keys on a hook next to the door to my bedroom in my camper remember this come nightfall i went to take a phone call outside and ended up wandering around the grounds for over an hour when i got back to the camper the door was locked and i was told by my best friend's older friend through the window that there wasn't enough room for me in my trailer so i reached for my keys to unlock the door but i realized i'd left them inside the camper on the hook in my room so i called my best friend from outside and all i was told was sorry bro nothing i can do so i ended up sleeping in my truck that night which i'd fortunately left unlocked by accident their race began at 8 a.m and at 7 they came meandering out of the trailer and woke me up no apology by the way while they were in their race i hooked my truck back up to the trailer closed and locked everything and waited until just after they finished and had started walking back to the trailer think really wide open field when i saw them coming i started the truck and drove off the property with them chasing behind i made the three hour trip back home declining call after call when i finally got home i finally took my best friend's call he started yelling at me saying why would you do this we have no way home now I just said, sorry, you shouldn't have made me sleep in my truck after I did you this solid. He told me that there were better ways to handle this than by leaving them in an unfamiliar city with no way home. I think he ended up calling his dad to come and get them. Is he right? Was there a better way to handle this? I felt justified until he said that. I'm kind of doubting my decision now. So am i the butthole okay look maybe there was a better way to handle this but i also think this was so good and so justified you did them such a solid by driving them three hours there promising to drive them three hours back and giving them a place to stay for free and they just threw it back in your face not even letting you sleep in your own camper that's insane you know what the more i think about it there was no better way to handle this you did exactly the right thing they threw it back in your face and you were out of there good stuff and also if they're spartan warriors then really they should be running home. You know, it's all part of the program. Am I the butthole for not giving my son part of his trust fund early because he refuses to sign a prenup with his fiance? Some background. I have four kids. My eldest John, who is 27 years old, was with my first wife, who died when he was five. I eventually remarried and got two stepdaughters, Lisa, who is 25, and Anne, who is 18. Then my second wife and I had Mike, who was a 13 year old boy my wife and i made sure to give them comfortable lives when john and lisa graduated from university we gifted them condo units we'll do the same when ann and mike graduate also all of them have trust funds that will be released when they turn 30. i'm quite proud of my kids john and lisa graduated from top universities john has a high paying job as an engineer while lisa pursued a master's degree in business while she worked in marketing eventually she started her own marketing consulting firm while being a part owner of a spa john recently got engaged to his girlfriend of two years and they want to get married by the end of this year she seems nice however she doesn't earn as much as him my son spends a lot of money on her on dates and expensive gifts I understand that it's his money and he can spend it however he wants. She's also moved in with him in the condo that I gave him. And as far as I know, she doesn't pay her share of utilities and association fees. 
And now, John is asking to get part of his trust fund so he can use it for the wedding since his fiance doesn't have much money to contribute. Now, here is where I might be the butthole. I told him I'd release part of his trust fund early if he draws up a prenup with her. He got angry and told me I was being unfair because I released half of Lisa's trust fund last year to help put up her business. He told me that I was playing favorites. I told him that Lisa did something worthwhile with her trust fund. And while a wedding is worthwhile, I told him it doesn't seem safe to use his fund for a wedding for a girl who doesn't bring much to the table. I told him that I just wanted him to have some security by drawing up a prenup. He got angrier and said I was implying that his fiance is a gold digger. My wife and the rest of the family refuse to take sides. So guys, am I the butthole? Okay, interesting one. For me, I think that you are the butthole here, OP. I'm sorry, just my opinion. Now, I do think that you're well within your rights to not give your son half of the trust fund. I I think that's absolutely fine because ultimately the trust fund's been set up to be released when they're 30. They're not 30. It's your money until that point, I think. That's kind of okay, in my opinion. But the reasons you've given for not giving him the money are so bad. Like the fact that you've given Lisa money for something that you think is worthwhile, but then not giving your other son money for his wedding because you're not quite sure about the woman that's not really your call to make i'm sorry and also the fact that you said that she doesn't bring much to the table is just downright rude like who really cares it's up to john isn't it it's not up to you i guess i'm saying that suggesting the prenup is okay and not giving the trust fund money early is okay but the reasons for doing that are really rude am i the butthole for making sexy poses while my neighbor kept recording me for no reason My dad passed away recently and he left me, a 26-year-old man, and my sister, who was 31, his house. It's super unkempt, so I've been doing lots of yard work outside in the mornings. I'm out there watering the grass in the mornings and evenings. Every single time I've done this, the neighbor right next door, who's like this older granny, comes out to her porch and straight up watches me without even hiding it. I introduced myself to her once and told her that me and my sister are the new owners after my dad passed, but it was obvious that she didn't want to talk. Next thing, she started coming outside with her phone pointing the camera right at me. I'm like, is there a problem? She says there's no problem as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I asked her, why is she recording me then? She asked, what's the problem with her recording if I'm not doing anything wrong? It's just so freaking weird. I didn't even know how to respond in that situation. As soon as I finished up to go back inside, she went back inside her house too. And this happens every single day that I'm outside watering the grass. It's always the same excuse that she wants to make sure I'm not doing anything else or if I do, it's on camera. So yesterday, I got fed up and decided to do something different. When she came out with her phone, I stuck my butt out and put my hand on my hip, looking right at her. At first, she was like, what the frick? But then she got really mad when I started wetting myself with the water hose and touching my neck while literally looking directly at her. Was it stupid? Yeah, but she put her phone away and started cussing me out instead for being a pervert. My sister told me later on that she came to the house when I was at work, talking about me sexually harassing her, making poses in provocative ways. My sister knows she's a pain in the butt since she probably has nothing better to do with her time, but she still says I shouldn't have stooped to her level, making her uncomfortable right back. I feel like I'm right on this one, and it wasn't even that bad. It's not like I was grabbing my balls or anything, but I also can be dumb sometimes, so I don't know. You guys tell me. Was I a butthole? Hey, look, if someone's filming you without permission on your private property, then you can do whatever you want, my friend. So making silly poses, sexy poses, hey, be my guest. If anything, she's the pervert for recording you. You're just doing your own normal poses on your own land, having fun, And she's the one that's got a camera out. Who's the real pervert, Granny? Yeah? Answer me that. Am I the butthole for going home after I got told to sleep on the floor? I'll preface this by saying that my husband has a friend, Carl, who he considers to be one of his closest. My husband sometimes calls Carl his nicotine because of how much he misses him and wants to spend time with him. They do everything together. They're even co-workers working the same job. Unfortunately, Carlos's wife passed away from cancer three months ago, which caused him to distance himself. My husband felt devastated for him. He recently started spending more time with him and brought him meals and new clothes. We planned a three-day vacation to another state. I made a hotel reservation for two. But unbeknownst to me, my husband had invited Carl to come with us. This made me upset because it spoiled the entire vacation. I'm not trying to be dramatic. 
I only found out when he went to pick him up. I sucked it up after my husband explained that Carl is a recent widower who's been wallowing in grief for so long and needed this vacation. The problem is money is tight, and since Carl hasn't worked ever since his wife passed, he couldn't pay for his own room, and we didn't have a budget for it. My husband said we should just share one room, and I again sucked it up, since he said we'd be out all day on the beach anyway. First night, I was in bed when my husband and Carl got back. I got woken up by my husband telling me to get out of bed and sleep on the mattress he put for me on the floor and that he and Carl would take the bed. I asked if he was serious and he asked what else is he supposed to do? He said Carl was a guest. We can't let him sleep on the floor. And at the same time, I can't share a bed with Carl while he, my husband, sleeps on the floor. I told him I didn't sign up for this, but he told me to suck it and try to pull the Carl is a widower card. I told Carl to get out and got up and got dressed to go home. My husband started yelling at me, calling me irrational, but I wasn't having it. I left the hotel and traveled back home. Carl didn't say anything when he saw me leave, except that I was making this non-issue an issue. When they got back, my husband refused to even talk about it, but still said I ruined this for Carl and us and acted abhorrently and disgustingly. I admit Carl is struggling and I might have ruined this for him, but I didn't even know he was coming. Okay, listen, I understand it. He is recently widowed and that's horrible. I get that. However, there's limits to it, isn't there? And I feel bad saying this because obviously Carl is going through a lot right now. But come on, your wife's booked a holiday for you too. And you just out of nowhere, bring along a plus one. And then say to your wife that you have to sleep on the floor because Carl's getting the bed. Like, what? No, that's way too far. Am I the butthole for telling my husband it's time to hash things out with my mum? I know this is going to sound weird, but I'm really struggling with it. So my husband and my mum don't get on like at all. They fight constantly. Admittedly, mum is the one who usually starts it, but my husband also escalates and refuses to let it go every time. It's exhausting for the entire family and they don't even fight over something worthy. They just nitpick each other's words. My husband has told me many times that the solution would be that he stops going with me over to mum's house. I refuse this because it's not practical, nor is it fit for long term. Besides, I don't feel comfortable attending family functions by myself like I'm single. My suggestion is for him to try to ignore her at least, and he said he would try. On Mother's Day dinner, mum noticeably started commenting on my husband's mother, implying that she hated her children and isn't proud to be a mum just because she refused to celebrate with them. My husband wanted to respond, but I whispered to him to let it go and stay calm, and he did. He still looked visibly upset, but he didn't say a word, which made me think that my solution might have worked. But I was wrong. Once we got home, he followed me to the bedroom and said, listen, I am never ever going back to that house ever again after all the trash your mum's done. I sighed and didn't say anything until he started throwing a fit about me watching my mum insult his and not wanting him to react. I snapped and told him he was acting childishly. He asked how, and I told him by giving out threats and saying he won't go with me to my mum's house again. He tried to make excuses, saying my mum created the situation, and he tried to put all the blame on her. I told him he's no saint either. He has his moments and has a habit of letting things get this far. He said that I was the one who let things get this far by not setting my mum straight. I told him his problem is with her and that it's time that they hash things out once and for all, just him and her. He sort of looked like I just offended him and told me I was wrong because this is my mum and it's my job to pull a stop to her shenanigans and get her to understand that he was sick and tired of her bs i told him he's an adult why should i defend him while he hides behind me he was like okay 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 don't get involved in the problem but don't tell me how to deal with it then he walked out and stopped talking to me he even took the couch which made me think he was punishing me for something i didn't do so am i the butthole all right op let me try and work this out quickly because I'm, I'm not gonna lie i'm struggling on the one hand you're telling your boyfriend not to argue with your mother all right that's clear then on the other hand you're saying why do you want me to stand up for you it's between you and my mum. so what's he supposed to do just sit there and take it permanently have someone just in front of you abusing your mother saying she must not love her kids because where is she and you just sit there and take it like come on that makes no sense i'm sorry but if that was me in this situation first of all i definitely wouldn't be with someone who couldn't realize that their mum was being a massive dick.
sorry, but she really is in this in this spot. And then second of all, I wouldn't just sit there and take it. I mean, I would at first. Look, I'm all for being polite, but there's a limit. When someone is just abusing your mum to your face, no, I'm not going to sit there. Sorry. Yeah, OP, you're the butthole for telling your husband that you should have done that. Am I the butthole for getting upset and telling my dad his girlfriend didn't buy me a Starbucks drink? I am a 17-year-old girl, and I've been living with my dad and his girlfriend of two years and her daughter, who is 13, for a couple of months now, while my mum is visiting my sick grandfather in Sweden. I've only ever stayed at my dad's on weekends before, so it's been hard getting used to living with his girlfriend and her kid full time. The kid is super whiny and pretty spoiled because my dad's girlfriend dotes on her, so I usually just stay in my room. Today, dad's girlfriend was taking her daughter on a special outing because she passed a maths test. And my dad suggested that I go with them for a girl's day out. I wanted to say no, but I knew that he wanted me to get to know his girlfriend and girlfriend's daughter better, so I agreed. He gave his girlfriend $300 to spend during the outing. We spent the day going in and out of stores, my dad's girlfriend's daughter liked, in the mall complex. My dad's girlfriend ended up buying her a load of clothes, makeup, and other stuff I don't remember. On our way back home, we stopped at the Starbucks because her daughter wanted a drink and some cake pops. Dad's girlfriend ordered a drink for her and her daughter and two cake pops. I asked her if I could get something and she said she ran out of money and she'd get you something next time. When they got their order, I asked if I could have one of the cake pops and my dad's girlfriend said that it was her daughter's treat for hard work and it would be wrong for me to take one since... You didn't do anything that deserved being rewarded. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty upset. When we got home, my dad saw their drinks and asked where mine was. I told him that I wasn't allowed to get one because I don't deserve it. His girlfriend got upset and said that I was twisting her words and her daughter just said I was being greedy and was jealous of her. Look, I know I'm not entitled to a drink or a cake pop, but I also don't think it's wrong to be a little annoyed. So, am I the butthole? OP, you are well within your rights to be annoyed here. Your dad gave his girlfriend $300 and she couldn't even afford to get you a drink at Starbucks. Yeah, that is entitlement 101. And by the way, you were entitled to a drink or a cake pop. It's your dad's money. I know he gave it to his girlfriend, but come on, you're there with them. And it's your dad. She can't get you one drink at Starbucks, are you joking? ridiculous you know what i'd probably be annoyed if your dad's girlfriend didn't offer to buy you a piece of clothing at the least you know 300 dollars of your dad's money and you're not even getting a piece of clothing on top of that a drink wow you're definitely not the butthole that is clear to see am i the butthole for wearing a tight dress despite my friend asking me not to i am a 20 year old woman and me and two friends both 22 year old women are currently on vacation For the sake of the story, I will call them Libby and Kat. Libby, Kat and I all decided that while we were on vacation for one week, we would go clubbing as much as possible. All of my friends know that I have a feminine sense of style. My entire wardrobe consists of pink, mini skirts, dresses, heels, and lots of jewelry. Not once has this ever seemingly been a problem with my friends, at least none that was mentioned directly to me. When you go clubbing, most people tend to wear tight outfits, so my suitcase was packed with several outfits meant for clubbing. Last night, after spending our day by the pool, I started googling clubbing places near us and broached the topic of starting our first night partying. All seemed excited, so we all headed up to our room to start getting ready. I was just about done with my makeup and hair when I grabbed the dress I was planning on wearing, and suddenly the mood felt extremely sour. For the sake of full clarity, it's a very short pink leather dress. Kat spoke up and mentioned that I should probably pick another outfit. I asked her why, and she said since we're all going together, none of us should try to outdo each other. I explained that I'm not trying to outdo anyone, and I just liked this dress. Libby sided with Kat, saying that I was clearly trying to one-up the both of them and was acting like a pick-me. I told them I'm wearing the dress no matter what, and I was sure they would look just as, if not more beautiful than me, in their outfits. They barely talked to me for the remainder of getting ready and split up from me the moment the Uber dropped us off. It's Tuesday, and they're still being cold and short with me. I kind of want to go home, but I'm curious if I'm being an overdramatic butthole. So... Am I the butthole? In my opinion, you're definitely not the butthole. You're on holiday and you can wear whatever you want. 
Obviously, I don't really understand your friend's point of view and I don't really know why they're bringing this up now whilst you're on holiday when they haven't really done so in the past when you've been at home going out clubbing normally. All I would say is if they're that insecure about what you're wearing, that says more about them than it does about you. But that's enough of my opinion because there's actually an update to this story. Next up, OP added a little bit more once they got back from their holiday. I want to start with the statement that I am no longer friends with either Libby or Kat. After reading the comments under my original post, I realized how trashy what they did was and that it put me in danger. I am seriously considering going home. I got up this morning and when I went to get dressed after my shower, I found that several of my clothes had been vandalized. Two of my tops have been torn. A skirt of mine is completely butchered. A couple of my dresses look like they went through a wood chipper and a pair of my heels has toothpaste squirted into the base. Both of my friends are denying they did it. Honestly, I'm just beyond crushed that they did this to my clothing and I don't even have the nerve to admit it. It genuinely makes me want to cry. The night after they vandalized my stuff, we went out to breakfast and I let them know that since I am the only person whose name is checked in on the hotel and my boyfriend pay for it, they both had five hours to pack and find another place to stay or they could talk it out with me and pay for the clothes and shoes that they damaged. This was not met kindly and both of them started cursing me out and telling me I was a selfish, conniving, snake-ass female dog. I told them that it was their choice to destroy my clothes and all I wanted to do was to talk it out with them and figure out why this had to happen in the first place. I didn't get a straight answer other than I am a selfish pick-me who doesn't deserve anything I have. So I took it as them giving me my answer. Luckily, they were not difficult besides some passive aggressive comments. I enjoyed the rest of my vacation as best as I could, given that I was alone. Luckily, a lot of the local women were extremely kind and chatted with me wherever I was, so it didn't feel as bad. I've been home for a little less than a week and I've received several nasty text messages from both Libby and Kat, plus some mutual friends. I spent most of this week trying to come to terms with the fact that I am losing several friendships over this. Thanks for all the help though. The comments really gave me solid advice and the guts to actually stick up for myself in this situation. Okay, what has just happened there? The revelation that they've destroyed some of your clothes is actually nuts. How are they your friends even in the first place? I mean, you've done the right thing to sack them off entirely. They're a disgrace. It was bad enough them telling you what you could and couldn't wear, but actually going to the lengths of destroying your clothes, and I imagine that some of them outfits probably cost a lot of money if they're going out clubbing outfits. That is mental unbelievable what have i just read i mean safe to say throughout all of this it was clear that you weren't the butthole but now it's even more so your friends are both cows am i the butthole for telling my boyfriend's friends i make twice what he does when they called me a gold digger and he didn't defend me i'm in a relationship with a guy who also works in tech he makes 68k and i make 130k i am a mechanical engineer at a robotic startup he works at a more stable job doing programming at a large company. He brought me to meet his friends at a party and they asked me about myself. His friends mostly work in tech too and they talked about themselves in terms of their jobs. I told them I'm a hiker, I do archery, I love road trips and camping and riding dirt bikes, etc. Basically talking about my hobbies because work is just a way to get paid to do the stuff I love. It's not how I define myself and it doesn't come to mind when someone wants me to tell them about myself. Sorry, I got to interrupt it. Never have I agreed with a statement more. When someone says, what do you do? And everyone just says their job or their role. That is so boring. Tell me what you're interested in. Anyway, one of his friends asked about work and I said, oh gosh, I don't want to talk about work at a party. I spent my whole day sweating my butt off in 95 degree heat trying to replace this busted motor just to find the replacement part was also screwed. I wasn't lying or trying to downplay that I have a good job. That really is how I spent my day and I wasn't in the mood to talk about it at a party. Some other conversations came up casually that probably also made me seem poorer, like me saying that car dealership repairs were a ripoff and telling my boyfriend that my childhood neighbor's trailer caught on fire and I was gonna visit and help her out. I wasn't doing it on purpose. I was literally just talking about my life but I guess I gave the impression I was poorer. It got later in the night. Everyone was getting drunker and some of his friends, not close ones though, were making jokes about me growing up in a trailer and being a gold digger and being ready to jump to a richer guy. Really misogynistic stuff, honestly, since they don't even know me and seem to just assume that all girls are gold diggers. My boyfriend didn't say anything. 
He later said it was because he smoked weed and he gets quiet and has trouble carrying on a quick conversation when he's high. But regardless, I felt hurt he didn't say anything. I got irritated with his friends and asked, now why the heck would you say that when I make twice what he does? His friends went quiet for a second and I continued saying, there ain't no gold to dig here, not with him or anyone at this party. So do you guys think I'm cheap or do you think I'm stupid? My boyfriend wanted to leave the party shortly after and he was pretty upset with me for telling everyone I make twice what he does. I said I would have held my tongue if he checked his friends himself, but he didn't say anything. So I wasn't about to let them talk to me like that. He said it was humiliating and now everyone thinks I'm a female dog. And I flippantly said, well, at least they know I'm a rich female dog. He was angry that I embarrassed him when I spoke up. I was angry I had to say anything at all because his friends were talking trash so it should be on him to check them. Stuff is still tense. So, am I the butthole for explaining why I'm not a gold digger? Absolutely not. There is no way that you're the butthole. There is nothing wrong and there's nothing more, I don't know, annoying, toxic, hateful, just rude than being called a gold digger in the first place, let alone when it's just completely not the fact. And if anything, your husband is the one that's gold digging, right? Technically, if there was going to be one of you, it's him. You're earning double his amount. I don't think it's that big of a deal that he didn't stand up for you in that moment. I mean, look, if he's had a bit to smoke, I can understand why maybe he didn't. And he thought, you know, you're all friends. He should have done. I'm not saying he shouldn't have done, but I can understand why in that split moment he didn't. But to say that you were humiliating him because you stood up for yourself, that is a big no-no in my opinion. You had to stand up for yourself. And what you said was completely correct. So I don't know why he's having a go at you for that. Overall, I'm getting the picture that this guy isn't the best. Clearly, he's not the best on his own. And his friends, after a couple of drinks, quite toxic. You said they're not his close friends, but still. His friends in general, I don't know why they're really saying this sort of stuff. And by the way, I do mean what I say. When people say, what do you do? Reply with hobbies. Nobody cares what your job is anyway. I don't care if you're a student. Shut up. I care what you're interested in, so that's a good answer. Am I the butthole for telling my husband he should be ashamed of himself and taking the girls and going home after he made them wait outside of the restaurants? I am a mother of two 19-year-old twins, they're girls. Their dad and I split up six years ago, and I'm now married to my husband, Kevin. The problem is, Kevin thinks that my girls are not disciplined, simply because they don't follow everything he tells them, because they don't see him as their father. We've already talked about that. Especially the part where he expects them to dress how he wants them to, and behave how he wants them to. He even called them weirdos, but that's just how teenagers are, and it's not a new thing. Anyways, I told him he needed to loosen up a little, and lessen his expectations of them. But I get it's hard to do, given he was brought up in a conservative household with a hardcore Christian family. Last week, he started a fight after seeing one of the girl's hairstyles, and said that she was looking trashy. Because of this, we had to cancel our trip to the mall, because he refused to drive us. A couple of days ago, we wanted to go out for dinner. I was intending on getting off work at 6, but had some stuff to get done. My husband and I agreed that he'd take the girls and go to the restaurant and wait for me there. He called me before they got out of the house to complain about what the girls were wearing. The girls sent me pics and I thought nothing was wrong with their outfits and I told him to just drop it and go. He said fine, then muttered something about me enabling them and then hung up. While I was still at work, I got a call from one of the girls telling me their stepdad had them stand and wait outside the restaurant because he didn't want to be seen with them dressing like that. I was stunned. I rushed to the restaurant and found them near the car. They explained he told them to wait in the car till he told them to come in, basically waiting for me. Then they started crying. So I had them get in my car and went inside the restaurant and found him on his phone. I went off on him and told him he should be ashamed of himself for treating my daughters like there was something to be ashamed of. He tried backpedaling, saying it wasn't like that. But I interrupted him and then walked out after canceling dinner. We went home and he came back hours later trying to argue that I can't blame him for disapproving of the girl's recklessness and that he tried communicating but I shut him down and treated him as less of a parent when he's just wanting what's best for them. He doesn't speak to me or the girls anymore. All right, semi-complex one here because although you are definitely not the butthole in this situation solely, I think the way you acted here was actually perfect, some would argue that you are the butthole overall because you were the one that chose to get into a relationship with this man in the first place. Now, I just don't understand how you could possibly have married somebody that acts like this. I mean, he sounds mental. You have like zero common ground. It's clear that your daughters very much dislike him. I don't really know what his intention is with them. He just is not acting like a father at all. From what I can see, just reading back through it pretty much, he just seems like a terrible father figure. 
No wonder your, your daughters hate him. So although the way you acted in this situation was fine, I think overall you are slightly the butthole for bringing this man into your daughter's lives in the first place, if that makes sense. Let me know if you agree on that one because it's a little bit meta and I might be wrong. Get in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Am I the butthole for ruining my brother's marriage because his wife left me at the pool? This whole situation is so bizarre that I still can't really process it. It still doesn't feel real, but I feel scared and guilty. I am a 19 year old woman and I had surgery a couple of days ago to get all four of my wisdom teeth out. And because I have a really bad fear of dentists, they had to drug me pretty hard to do the removal. Not like laughing gas that wears off really fast, but actual IV medicine, so I was pretty much unconscious during the whole thing. They told me to have a responsible adult drive me to the appointment and back because the meds they gave me would make it dangerous to drive. My mum was on a work trip and couldn't take me. So I asked my sister-in-law, Brie, 24, not her real name, if she could do it, as the whole thing would only take an hour or two. I even offered her gas money because the dental office is about 45 minutes away. Now, I would have asked my brother, but he works during the day, while Brie is a stay-at-home mum to their two-year-old daughter, who I think was at Brie's mum's house that day. Brie agreed to take me to my appointment, and the surgery went fine. Brie waited in the lobby for me to be done. When I came out of anesthesia, I was very disoriented and nauseous, which I guess is normal. I had gauze shoved in my mouth to stop any bleeding, and Brie took me to her car after I was let go. I don't really remember the drive, but it felt like not enough time passed before Brie got out of the car and told me to come with her. I was really out of it and just followed her because the alternative was staying in the hot car. Long story short, we were at a pool? I was really confused, but once we were through the gate, Brie basically parked me at one of those little table benches and said that she'd be back in a while. I was still trying not to puke and I was really dizzy from the heat. It was 90 plus degrees and the drugs. So I asked her to take me home, but she wouldn't. I guess since it was her day off and she didn't have my niece, she was meeting friends at the pool. I started to feel really sick and on the verge of passing out or having a panic attack. So I called my brother. I don't think he could understand me between the meds and the stuff in my mouth because he hung up and I guess called Brie because she came stomping back over, cussing and yelling at me and took me back to the car. I passed out on the drive home, but when we arrived, my brother had left work and met us in the driveway. He was screaming at Brie and she was crying. I was still pretty disoriented, but my brother took me back home and stayed with me until the meds wore off. That's when he told me that he's divorcing Brie because of what she did, plus some other things he didn't go into detail about. It's been a few days since then and Brie has been blowing up my phone, telling me what a female dog I am and how me tattling destroyed her family. Now part of me feels bad for my niece and I wonder if I should have just dealt with it and waited for her to be done at the pool instead of calling my brother and causing problems. So am I the butthole? Okay, well, no doubt in my mind, OP, that you are definitely not the butthole, not even close. If you're feeling a little bit guilty because you were the one that asked Brie to, you know, take you to the, the hospital and pick you up again, and you've caused, in, in, you know, air quotes, the separation of that family, you definitely haven't and you definitely shouldn't feel guilty about it. Look, Brie agreeing to take you to and from hospital is a nice thing to do, but as soon as she's done that, she is therefore responsible for you. She knew what sort of situation and shape you'd be in. I mean, everyone knows that after having your wisdom teeth taken out, you're all over the place we've all seen the videos online haven't we of people that have, have had their teeth taken out just going mental how has she left you on your ones and gone off to meet her friends that is shocking and i understand what you're saying in terms of her niece and your brother's relationship with her but trust me that would not be the only reason that your brother is breaking up with her and divorcing her that will be the tip of the iceberg i can guarantee you that am i the butthole for making fun of my partner's hair loss the title sounds bad i know this has been an ongoing argument between my partner and I for almost six months now. I feel like I'll never hear the end of it. Backstory. I am a 23 year old woman and I'm a naturally fair skinned girl. I'm also cursed with pretty dark body hairs, which makes upkeep a complete pain. I shave my legs and two days later, I have dark prickles of hair that I can't shave again for one and a half weeks or so without causing some pretty painful razor burn. It's something that's bothered me for a long time as it takes away a lot of my freedom in the warmer seasons and I have to pick and choose what events I can show my legs at. This year, I was invited to go with my partner, a 28 year old man, to his family's Christmas day lunch, which I was pretty excited for. A few days before the lunch, my partner and I were also invited to a new 
Year's Day pool party at his friend's place. Southern Hemisphere for anyone confused. Of course, this filled me with dread because I knew that by this point, my legs would look freaking terrible in a swimsuit. I decided to go to both and found a gorgeous summer maxi dress to wear for New Year's Day. I thought I'd just relax by the pool, on the banana lounge, and also help the host organize the barbecue lunch. After the lunch, I was laying out with a few of the other ladies while our partners were all mucking about in the pool doing cannonballs. My friend's partner, a 25-year-old man, asked why I wasn't swimming, and I let him know I just wasn't feeling like it that day, and I'd rather lay in the shade. At this point, my partner got back out of the pool, and I assumed he was going to jump back in like usual. Instead, though, he came over to me, lifted up the bottom of my dress, revealing my legs, and exclaimed, She isn't swimming today because she's as hairy as a freaking bear. I grabbed my dress and pulled it back down quite embarrassed and shot him a very angry look. There were a few chuckles, but mostly awkward silence. I was mortified. He knows how self-conscious I am about this. In my anger, I then bit back and said, maybe we can transplant some of my leg hair to that nice bald patch you've been brewing. This was also met with a few chuckles, followed by even more awkward silence. My partner then stormed off from the pool and went inside to get dry. He got changed into his dry clothes and came out and said that we're leaving. I felt really bad, especially for the hosts, so I apologized to them and said they could keep my salad bowls that I'd brought over. My partner and I have never spoken about his hair loss before. When I said this, I did know that it likely bothered him, given that I found photos on his phone of him taking pictures of the top of his head, where the hair loss has started. I just felt it was hypocritical that he could create that whole situation and my insecurity wasn't off limits, but his is? I know I didn't handle myself the best here, but am I the butthole? Now guys, safe to say that that post absolutely blew up with over 17,000 upvotes. And as such, Opie has given us an update. Update for everyone. I sat him down when we both finished work and he came over just a little over an hour ago. It was a very short conversation. I started it by stating that I would like to clear the air and resentment in the relationship. His response to this was, are you going to finally apologize? I just about died inside. I asked him what I should be apologizing for, and he said the comments I made about his hair at the New Year's party. I then suggested that perhaps we should apologize in sequence of events, so he should go first, Lamau. He said that there is no way he is apologizing to me after what I said, because I crossed the line. I asked him what about him crossing the line with my boundaries and humiliating me? He said it isn't the same because I could have just shaved it off and been done with it, whereas his situation could be permanent. I said that my situation would have remained permanent if I didn't do something about it. Opie references her starting leg hair removal in the comments down below. He then went quiet and started to shut down, telling me he doesn't want to talk. I told him I don't want his company if he can't have an adult open conversation with me. He left. I will be dumping him tomorrow. I didn't sign adoption papers. I never wanted this man baby. Well, there we go. Strong words from OP and definitely strong actions, but you can't fault it, right? You have to be willing to take it if you're willing to give it, like your ex-boyfriend. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of, you know, playful banter and uh, taking the mick out of your partner. I think that's all right, you know, if it's healthy. But if you're willing to do what your ex-partner did and then you're just going to cry about it when the same is done onto you, then don't even bother in the first place. You're a loser. Ultimately, it's the refusal to communicate, which is the most damning thing in this relationship this could all have been sorted very easily just with you both apologizing but no uh, he was unwilling to do so and you know what it's probably a good thing this entire event happened because now you can see that you don't want to be with him for a long time sorted am i the butthole for turning in a school project that showed my neighborhood and neighbors in a bad light i am a high school student in a spanish class and we had an assignment to make a video tour of a place It had to be in Spanish and it had to be conversational, like you were showing a friend around. I decided to just walk around my street and make a tour of that because my family wasn't going anywhere else. So I filmed a neighbor's house. When I walked by, they were having a screaming fight like usual. Here are the neighbors. They are very angry. They like to yell in the morning, afternoon and night, I commented. The next neighbor's house. Joe and Tammy live here. They are very nice and have three dogs. Someone then drives by and cat calls me profanely. As a joke, I yell back, Estupido perro, which means stupid dog. Then he slammed his brakes, yelled something racist, and sped off. I said to the camera, This man is very stupid. He's a man, but acts like a dog. I also introduced 10 other mundane things, like flowers, a bird, etc. 
I cut out the long sequences of me walking, but I left everything else. My teacher had a rubric of the types of descriptions and numbers of things you needed and taking out any would lose me points. It was too dark out to film more. The second part of the assignment was to upload the video on the school websites and post comments back and forth responding to several of your classmates' videos. One of my friends from class recognized the racist guy as someone who volunteers with the middle school soccer team. So she texted me like, haha, should I say something? And I said, sure. So she posted in Spanish, in the car is Mr. Jones who coaches the children. I learned from your video that he hates women and is racist. I replied to say, does he teach the girls or the boys? And she replied back, both. I replied back, that is terrible. A guy in my class made a comment like, the man yelling at his family is a police officer. He's always a very angry man. I replied back to say, that is scary. The next day at school, my teacher wanted to talk to me alone. She told me that my video was inappropriate and I shouldn't have filmed the neighbors or the coach. I said that the assignment was literally to walk around a place you're familiar with and react like you're having a conversation with a friend. And my video is literally what happens when I walk around with my friends. My teacher said that I was being belligerent on purpose and I should have known that stuff has to be dealt with delicately. I said, I just don't agree. It's just life. And there's no point pretending that something's not happening. She said she'd taken down the video and it was the sort of thing that should be brought to authorities instead of posted for the whole class. I said, I didn't even know who the guy in the car was and who was I gonna call about the cop? The cops? I have a meeting with the principal coming up tomorrow. So am I the butthole for having posted that video for the Spanish class? Now guys, before you begin to start writing your comments down below, hold your horses because I've got an update for you. I had the meeting this morning. I think it went well. I have a study hall now, so I have a little time to write an update. So last night I did a bunch of prep. Before the meeting, I emailed the video to the elementary school principal, guidance counselor, and a few parents I know with kids on the sports team to say their coach had yelled sexually explicit and hateful things at me, a student in the school system. I wanted to get out ahead and make sure the video was out there before the school might put pressure on me to delete it. I also backed up the video to multiple places. I asked the teacher I trust to sit in on this meeting and have it be recorded and sent to all participants afterwards. We scheduled it for just before the school day started on Zoom so I wouldn't miss any class. And finally, I decided to write up a list of things I'd want to discuss in the meeting and shared it with my favorite teacher in advance so she could help me address those questions. And for the actual meeting, I decided I'd just go into it, acting as if they would obviously do the right thing and ask for help. I was hoping having a teacher on my side and the meeting on video would pressure them to help. I thought if I approached it from a, well, obviously you're going to take this seriously perspective and I had it on video, it would put them in a tough spot to have to contradict me. So when I called in and everyone said good morning and the principal asked if I knew why I'd been called in this morning, I just started out by saying, yes, I assume it's about the kids coach. Thank you so much for calling this meeting with me this morning. I really appreciate how proactive you are about addressing the sexual harassment from a staff member. I understand this is a mandated reporting state. I wanted to ask if there was any information you would need to add to your reports. And the principal seemed kind of caught out and said that a report had not yet been filed. I said, well, as I understand it, there is a 48 hour time frame to file a report. I understand making you aware of this right before the weekend might have complicated things. Perhaps there was a miscommunication about the severity of the events, but I was approached in a car, sexually harassed and threatened by a man who works with other minors in the public school system. As soon as I said that, the meeting tone really changed. The meeting also had a school guidance counselor on it and I could tell she understood how serious what I was saying was especially because I was politely calling out that they were already past the legal deadline that they should have filed the report by. She actually took over at that point and the principal didn't participate as much. I also tried to smooth things over somewhat by saying I was sorry I brought this to their attention in a school project instead of asking for a meeting with the principal directly. I should have reached out for help. So that's it. I'm still kind of freaking out about how big of a deal it turned out to be. Also, I wanted to say thanks to everyone who had great suggestions of how to approach this, like having an adult to back me up, getting the meeting on record, and knowing about mandatory reporting. Yeah, that is the beauty of Reddit right there. Before the update was posted, there was a couple days in between the original and the update, and the comments, my word, 
so helpful. I don't really have time to read through all of them, but a lot of them were just giving so much advice to OP as to how to go about this. Clearly, OP used a lot of that advice and just absolutely dominated everyone in that Zoom meeting. I would have loved to have been in it. It would have been sensational. I mean, they're not wrong, by the way. They're just making sure everyone realizes how serious the situation was. This could have gone so differently, though. If you hadn't have put your foot down and acted like this, I reckon that you would have been the one that was getting in trouble for, I guess, like outing people at your school or filming them when they're not in school, perhaps. You know, the way it seems to be going when your Spanish teacher was like, oh, you shouldn't have done this. This was really bad, etc., etc." I feel like this is the sort of tack that the, the school wanted to continue with. But hey, utter domination. I love it. Am I the butthole for telling my daughter not to talk to me? For some backstory, I have three girls, 14, 16, and 25 years old. They used to get along great. Then my 14 year old got a cat for her birthday and my 16 year old hated him. I think she's scared of him, but refuses to admit it. So she used that as an excuse to not have much of a relationship with her sister. She's also been more distant with the rest of our family in an attempt to distance herself from her sister and her cat. My husband also dislikes the cat, but he doesn't let it affect his relationship with his family. My husband and I were at our friend's birthday party last week. We were supposed to be out late and our two youngest kids were home alone. Our 16 year old was taking the family dog out and our 14 year old's cat was trying to play and was swiping at her feet. You know what guys, let's give them names. I'm gonna call the 16 year old Ella, the 14 year old Ruby and the 25 year old Alice. So Ella, our 16 year old, called Ruby, our 14 year old, and told her to get her trash head cat away from her and told her what the cat was doing. Apparently, Ruby took her time to get there, then laughed, called the cat a good boy and gave him a treat. Now, Ruby denied this, but it sounds like something that she would do. This sparked an argument between the two and Ella kept cursing the cat out. She knows this hurts Ruby and Ruby retaliated by cursing her out. Ella responded by telling Ruby that she doesn't love her and hasn't for a long time, that she hates her, that she's so excited for the day she gets to move out and never speak to her or see her again. This deeply hurt Ruby because family is extremely important to her and our oldest, Alice, lives nearby but never asks her to hang out and only speaks to her a couple of times a year, which is already very hard on her. Then to rub salt on the wound, she grabbed a treat, called the cat's name and threw the treat outside. The cat chased her and Ruby spent over an hour looking for her cats. Ella called my husband and told him about their arguments and Ruby called me and told me what Ella had done with the treats. So we had to leave early. When I got home, I grounded Ella because she escalated the argument by cursing the cat out, then hurt her sister by going on that spiel about how she hates her and she's going to be alone, then for throwing the treats. But my husband ungrounded her and said that Ruby should be punished for laughing and giving the cat a treat when he was trying to scratch Ella. Ruby asked if anything was going to happen to Ella for what she said and did. And Ella yelled that she meant everything. I told her that she ruined my weekend and not to speak to me. But my husband took Ella's side and has been sleeping on the couch since. And Ella hasn't spoken to me or Ruby since the arguments. Last night, I found my husband helping Ella pack and getting her important documents out of the safe. When I asked what he was doing, he said that Ella was going to stay with Alice. I told him Ella wasn't going anywhere, but he ignored me and went back to packing. Ella is now gone and my husband is still on the couch. So am I the butthole for telling my daughter not to speak to me? Wow, uh, where do I even begin with this one? Uh, you can tell that this goes way before the cat. I think it's more than just the cat episode. This has been brewing for a very long time. And to be fair, I think the fact that you've let it get to the situation is probably on you, OP, not gonna lie. I don't know, but I feel like if it was my two kids, it'd be pretty obvious that something was brewing between them and you have to kind of step in and make sure that relationship isn't completely destroyed destroyed like it has been saying though that you're not going to speak to one of your children as a mother i'm not sure you should ever be saying that to be fair i get it heat of the moment but surely you just have to take it on the chin and say look for the sake of the family we're going to have to try and mend this relationship and that is going to mean speaking to one another because saying i'm not going to speak to you is extremely immature i think i'm just looking through some of the comments and i kind of agree everyone's just like what is going on here why is everyone's relationship in this family so fractured it's weird also like why are you and your husband so different in your opinions here as well i thought at least you two would have something in common given that you've chosen to you know become partners i don't know there are a lot bigger problems in this family than i can see um who's the butthole i don't really care to be honest just someone needs to go in and sort it out remember those old programs with the nannies 
yeah get one of those in and and make sure she goes to work on the parents as well i don't know what's going on here if you know more than me get in the comments i'll have a look through and uh, heart some of my favorites wow what a post am i the butthole for hiding my neighbor's garden gnome because it was scaring my son my neighbor cindy has a large front garden she grows flowers and some produce sometimes she comes over with extras which is nice she also has a gnome village in her garden. You know, those tacky garden gnomes you see in lawn and garden stores that you can paint or whatnot? Well, recently Cindy got a new gnome. For whatever reason, my five-year-old son has developed a fear of this particular gnome. I'm not sure why, and yes, I've asked him why. I'm sure he's seen something scary on YouTube or something. The gnome is just a normal gnome with like a gardening hoe and a basket of flowers. I decided to talk to Cindy. I explained the problem and I asked if she would move the gnome to the back garden or behind the bushes on her patio. But Cindy refused. I wasn't asking for much. A few days ago, my son was outside playing and his ball rolled into Cindy's yard. He refused to go and get it, crying and begging me to get the ball. I got the ball and at the same time, I moved that gnome behind some flower bushes. My plan was to move it back once my son stopped playing. Cindy came out to water the garden, noticed the gnome was gone, and demanded to know where it was. She even threatened to call the police on me over a gnome. After I gave her back the gnome, Cindy told me not to come on her property again. I told my wife what happened, and while she thinks Cindy overreacted, she also thinks I shouldn't have taken the gnome. She says our son will get over his fear in time, but he'll just have to play in the back. I think our son has a right to play in his own front yard without being scared of a gnome though. So, am I the butthole? All right, not gonna lie, reading through the comments here on Reddit, and um, I disagree with pretty much all of them. Uh, not a shock, I do that sometimes. They all say that OP is the butthole here. Should parent their kid better, shouldn't touch someone else's stuff, etc, etc. And I get it, but we live in the real world. And sometimes saying, oh, it's her property, you can't do that stuff, teach a kid, etc, etc. It's just, it's just wrong. You know, it's just wrong. Listen, you don't get in the comments down below because I know I'm in the minority here. But for me, right, I've got my five-year-old kid who doesn't even want to go and play in his own garden because he's terrified of something that is so, like, you know, irrelevant, doesn't even matter. It's one gnome. Yeah, turn it around. Cindy, by the way, should be saying straight away, I oh, don't worry, it's all good. It's only one gnome. I don't really get that much of a benefit from having it compared to your kid that can't even go and play in his own garden. Like, it's, it's not even a complication here. Yes, it's annoying for her. She's bought a gnome and she can't, you know, whack it out because unfortunately her neighbor doesn't like it. But the courteous thing to do here, surely, is to just say, all right, we'll put it away until the kid grows up and then get it out when he's got over his fear. Like people are saying in the comments, you've got to teach your kid to not have irrational fears. Yeah, but every kid has irrational fears when they're that age. Like teaching them that it's just a gnome, fine, but they'll learn that in time anyway when they realize, oh, it's just a gnome. The kid's five. No, I'm sorry, this comment is so... Th You're the butthole. Your child is your job. You don't prepare the environment for your child. You know what? Sorry, let's just get up on screen. Look, put it, put it there. 1.8K upvotes. But why? Anyway, you don't prepare the environment for your child. You prepare your child for his environment. There are so many ways you could have dealt with that, including making up funny songs and stories about gnomes. That was not an approach that would occur to anyone else who isn't ragingly entitled. But, yeah, but part of the fact he's not entitled, he's just like, his kid's crying, you know? This is the problem with Reddit sometimes. People are just like so anal about things. Like, it's not that deep. It's a gnome. She can just take it away and the kid can stop crying. It would be better. Okay, I'm just gonna... Let's see. Uh, by the way, I know that I'm in the minority here because there are a lot of comments that are disagreeing with me. But the one on the screen again, I disagree with. You're the butthole. I can smell your entitlement from here. The, kid, the dad is clearly not entitled. That is, I mean, trust me, I've, I've read enough stories to know that he's not. You don't touch things that don't belong to you. All you had to do was go and get your property, the ball, and be on your merry way. Okay, I can partially agree with that one, for sure. He didn't have to hide it. But I also do think that Cindy should have just said, Oh, your kid is crying because of something I have that is very irrelevant. I'll put it away for now. That would have been much easier. The, the th all the comments are literally just saying, oh, you can't touch someone else's property. Yeah, but your kid's crying and it's fine. It's a, it's a gnome. You're the butthole. You had zero right to touch another person's property. I'd be very angry if I was your neighbor and you did that to me. I wouldn't care. If someone like went on my property, yeah, and then I had a gnome out and they said, really sorry. I just hid this gnome for a little period of time whilst my son, who's five, your neighbor, was playing 
because it scares him. I'd be like, yeah, that makes complete sense to me. Any reasonable person would say that. I don't know. I just don't know. But hey, let's find another comment because I'm really enjoying this. You're the butthole. Your kid will get over it. When I was four, I flipped out at the zoo because Spider-Man was there posing for photos with kids. I was terrified to go anywhere near him and I'm sure I put on quite a display. My parents didn't demand Spider-Man go hide in the bushes though. Yeah, that is completely different though, isn't it? Because I'm sure lots of kids were enjoying him. He was doing, okay, not in that way. He was doing his job and it was just your kid that had an issue. This is this is a gnome. It's not a human being doing their job, you know? Like you can just, you can literally get the gnome and go like this. Spin it around, you know, it's ugh, sorry. This person said when I was five, I refused to eat one meatball in my spaghetti because it creeped me out. I'm 40 and totally fine. Well, I don't understand what that's achieving. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like sometimes some Redditors are like so like neaky. That's my main point. Listen, you get in the comments. Let me know. Am I wrong? Probably. Who cares? It's all about opinion. That was a bit of a rant. Am I the butthole for evicting my sister and her daughters after they hid my wife's wig and embarrassed her? First off, I want to start by mentioning that my wife is a cancer patient. She unfortunately started losing her hair due to chemotherapy and she's been incredibly insecure about it. Her lack of hair in particular. She got a wig and started wearing it. I don't mind it. I 100% support her since she only wears it around family and friends. My sister lost her apartment after a messy divorce and moved in with her twin daughters, 16 years old, almost a month ago. Things have been going well, except my niece's constant remarks about my wife's wig. They got so hung up on it and kept asking lots of questions. They asked to take turns to try it on, suggested they straighten it with the straightener and so on, which was exhausting. They even pressured to see her without it, but my wife was uncomfortable and refused. Yesterday, I got home and found that my wife had locked herself in the bedroom and was crying. I asked her what happened. She told me she woke up and couldn't find her wig, then discovered that my nieces had taken it and hid it, urging her to come out so they could see her without her. My wife repeatedly asked them to give it back, but they started laughing and recording. My wife had had to lock the door to keep a distance because they didn't stop. I was fuming. I went into the kitchen and confronted them. They acted confused, but I was able to get the wig back. I lashed out, telling them they humiliated my wife and harassed her by taking away her wig. They said it was just a lighthearted prank, which made me go off on them even more. My sister got involved and said my wife was just being too sensitive and the girls were just curious to see her without a wig and she overreacted. I told her her daughters were recording her, but she saw nothing wrong in that and said that I was now overreacting as well. So I lost it on her too and told her she and my nieces are no longer welcome to stay at my home and they need to leave. I later let them know about the eviction since they thought I wasn't serious and they started crying, begging that I let it go. But my wife is no longer comfortable around them after what they did. My sister called our elderly dads and he also begged that I let them stay, insisting my nieces were just acting like typical teenagers. He offered to speak to my wife, but I declined. They've been begging that I change my mind, but I keep refusing. So, am I the butthole? No, OP, you are definitely not the butthole, in my opinion. That's a pretty horrible thing that they've done. Like, absolutely disgusting. Look, I get the whole, like, kids will be kids idea, but these guys are teenagers. They've got some common sense at this point, or at least they should have. Doing that sort of thing, embarrassing someone to that extent, is actually a truly horrible thing to do. Yeah, get them gone. I'm sorry. Like, genuinely, guys, imagine having to be locked up in your own bedroom, in your own house, because you're uncomfortable comfortable that's a pretty horrible feeling let me sorry just reading back through this again is actually crazy they're recording and trying to actively humiliate your cancer stricken wife get them gone am i the butthole for telling my sister that her husband would take her more seriously if she didn't dress like she did my sister anna married my friend lance he was the cool guy in our friend group Handsome, mysterious, smart, quiet. I don't know how he ended up with my sister. She is the total opposite, loud, funny, outgoing. She is beautiful though, really beautiful. And when they got together, everyone said how good they looked. Anna seemed to be really in love with him all the time. She used to say how dreamy he was, how good he treated her, and how spoiled she felt. But Lance was always so stern and quiet. She would revolve around him at family gatherings, but he wouldn't engage that much with everyone but me and her. I was surprised when he asked her to marry him. 
My sister never took the wifey role too seriously. She had a non-traditional wedding and Lance went along with it. She made a bunch of rules that he agreed to and then they moved to his house. Anna banned house utensils from the wedding gift list. She doesn't work, didn't finish her studies, and they don't plan on having kids. My sister is pretty much only into her looks, and I didn't think Lance cared for that before. She's always on Snapchat or Instagram. I thought that after getting married, she would dress more appropriately since she used to use crop tops, blouses, dresses, and shirts that showed her cleavage, short skirts, or tight jeans, but she says that Lance likes her just fine. Last week was my dad's birthday, and we had a party. My sister and Lance came and she was wearing a pretty short floral dress. Nonetheless, most of the men were looking at her, including my dad's friends. Lance was as stoic as always, and my sister came to my mum and I saying that she didn't know why he was so quiet since he's not like that. He is like that though, like what the F? So I told her that if she didn't dress like that, he might take her more seriously. She got sad and sat quietly the rest of the night and I didn't think much of that. But a few days ago, Lance texted me and said that he would appreciate if I didn't comment on his wife's way of dressing again. Did I miss something? Uh, Sorry, guys. I'm just a little bit confused here as to why the heck OP is even getting involved in this. Like, it's so unprovoked. It's so unnecessary. It's just weird. Stay out of it. Not once in the story did I ever get any indication that anyone apart from you cared about what your sister was wearing. And from Lance's point of view, he's just being himself how he always has been. And then out of nowhere, you're telling his wife how to dress. And to be honest, I'd say the same thing as him. Please don't comment on my wife's way of dressing. What? I mean, look, fair enough. Your sister came to you and was upset at the way he was acting. I get that. But that's got nothing to do with the way she dresses. And even if it did, don't say that to her. It's just rude. Let's move on. Am I the butthole for uninviting my cousin, brother, uncle, and dad to my wedding over a prank? I am a 22-year-old woman, and I grew up in a family where men prank and tease each other. Ever since my fiancé, Tim, and I got engaged, my cousin, brother, dad, and uncle joked about running some tests to see what type of man Tim is. They've done stuff like forcing him to play chess four times in a row, secretly slashing his tires to see if he'd fix it himself like a man, or get help like those lazy guys. They'd ask him questions like what joke he'd like to tell his future mother-in-law, his opinions on abortion, Jesus, gender equality, etc. They also tested his fishing and hunting skills, overwhelmed him with hypothetical scenarios to test his decision-making abilities and mental strength. They kept calling him slow and soft, even though he's got a medical condition, asthma, but they think he's making excuses. I've demanded them to stop, but dad said this is just typical stuff men challenge each other with and said that I was ruining the fun. Last week, they took Tim on a three-day trip and hid his inhaler. He left them and returned in seven hours and told me. I was seething after he said they admitted to hiding it as a challenge. I exploded on them when they returned. My cousin asked if little Timmy ran to you to tattle. I yelled that all four of them are uninvited to my wedding. My brother freaked out, saying it was a prank and they were going to give it back. Dad said they'll apologize if I insist, but Tim will have lost the little respect they'd gained for him and in their eyes will always be the soft college kid who's not up for the challenge. I called him and the others awful, then I left. My cousin is begging that we talk. My uncle's been quiet, but dad is so mad and now he's getting mum involved to get me to reconsider this decision. But I keep refusing to re-invite them. Mum's saying I'm exaggerating and should let bygones be bygones and not let this ruin my relationship with my family. So, am I the butthole for making it my hill to die on or am I exaggerating? Hey man. Do you want to hear a funny prank? Um, taking away someone's inhaler who has asthma. If that doesn't make you laugh, then I don't know what words. That's funny.com. I mean, you say prank. The word bullying comes to mind. That is what's going on here. Now, I don't have asthma, but those of you that do will know just how scary it is to not have your inhaler. Uh, and, you know, who knows what could happen? That is just awful. People with asthma need their inhaler, ultimately, to survive. So by taking that away as a prank, you're just an absolute Now, that is the hard C word. So that's going to be censored, but um, I'm sure you all know what I said, and I stand by it. Am I the butthole for ordering delivery food when I only live a few blocks away from the restaurants? There's a local burger joint that my family and I love. It's about 10 blocks away from our house, and they do both delivery and pickup. I'm a full-time student and a stay-at-home mum to a toddler who's a year and a half, while my husband also works full-time. I had a big exam and a couple of lab practicals due today and was too tired to cook dinner. 
So I decided to order a couple of burgers and fries from the local joints. It was already dark out, really cold, and I didn't feel like trying to wrangle my kid into their snowsuits or the stroller to walk over there as we don't have a car. So I ordered delivery on their website for an additional fee. This wasn't a delivery service like DoorDash or Uber Eats. The restaurant uses its own online platform and hires its own drivers to deliver food. I paid online and left a 20% tip. About 30 minutes later, I got a notification that the delivery driver was at my building. So I went downstairs to pick my food up. When I got to the door, the delivery person was very rude and told me that next time I should get off my bar and pick up my own dang food and that she doesn't get paid enough to deliver food less than a mile. I just grabbed my food and didn't say a word to her and headed back towards the elevator. I heard a pound on the locked door as I walked away and turned around to see she'd hit the door with some snow and was flipping me off. I went upstairs kind of frazzled and ended up calling the restaurant to let them know what happened and to please reimburse me for my tip. The manager I talked to was horrified and apologized and ended up returning my tip also offering me a 20% off coupon for a future visit. Now, we love this burger shop, so this poor experience isn't going to stop us from eating their food. I'm just not going to get delivery from them again. So, am I the butthole for ordering delivery from a restaurant a few blocks away? Is this some kind of unwritten rule of delivery that I didn't know about? No, it definitely isn't. (laughs) That is odd. Now, look, I don't know how this delivery driver gets paid exactly. Let me know in the comments if you have any sort of idea, but I would just presume that they get an hourly wage right and it's as simple as that it doesn't depend on how many deliveries they get done or how long they're on the bike etc etc if anything if it was dependent on how many deliveries they got done in their shift they'd be more happy with short deliveries like this wouldn't they the whole point being I don't get why this delivery driver was unhappy at only going a short distance. Like, that's what you've signed up for. I don't really understand. I genuinely can see no way in which this disrupts them at all. Like, if they're getting paid more to do more deliveries, they love it. If they're not, which it seems like they're not, then why does it matter? Like, nothing's changed. You're still doing your job. I don't get it. I mean, look, maybe they were having an awful day, but what's really rude and and absolutely inexplicable is then chucking a snowball at them and and giving them the finger. I mean, that is just mental. Uh, probably needs to be sacked that's disgraceful customer service good thing that the manager you know respected you and gave you a coupon though i rate that a lot am i the butthole for saying it's a little embarrassing that a girl's nanny puts little notes in her lunch so this girl nicole who is 16 started going to my school after winter break she's a little weird to be honest she doesn't talk a lot and when she does talk she's so quiet that you can barely hear her she used to eat in her car but one of my friends felt bad for her and invited her to eat with us I noticed that all of her lunches had a little piece of paper and she'd read it, smile for like two seconds, then fold it up and put it in a pocket in her lunchbox. Sometimes she'd take it out and read it a couple of times during lunch. I eventually asked her what it was and she said that she has a nanny and she writes her notes every day. I asked if she thinks that's a little embarrassing because I don't know anyone who's had notes in their lunches past fifth grade. She got kind of defensive and said that her nanny does similar things for her siblings who are all in preschool or elementary school. So it kind of proved my point. She started eating in her car again after that. And one of my friends got mad at me because apparently she had a really bad home life before moving here and she's never had anyone do that stuff for her. I don't know how the frick she expected me to know considering she usually only talks about school, but it's starting some drama in my friend group. So I wanted to know if I was the butthole. Newsflash, you are. Yeah, again, I'm sorry, but OP, I don't want to like flat out say you're a bully, but you're definitely bordering on bullying tendencies here. You have actually acknowledged yourself that when this girl reads the note from her nanny, she smiles. Sometimes, and I'm reading your words here. If you're watching this, I'm reading your words. Sometimes reading it two or three times and smiling to herself. Because guess what? It makes her happy. And the fact that you're saying, oh, you're a kid for doing that. Why would you want to take someone's happiness away from them? Why? Answer me that. Comment down below. If you're watching right now, comment down below. I'm interested or call me. My number is uh, 07986. Oh yeah, but in all seriousness, uh, this girl is now eating alone in her car because of you. Think about that. Really do. Am I the butthole for banning my mother-in-law from the house after I discovered that she's installed a camera in the bedroom? My husband, who's 33, got into a car accident almost a month ago. He's been bedridden due to a back injury and I've been his primary caregiver. The pressure has been too much from my mother-in-law. She keeps telling me to take care of him and be there for him constantly. She begged me to take time off work and I did. She asked me to send her hourly updates about his condition for the first two weeks. But when I don't, she gets mad and causes an issue. She visits every day, but doesn't do anything to help. 
Alternatively, she actually lists all the things I should or shouldn't do. The family keeps telling me she's just worried sick for her son, so I try and stay calm. Days ago, she called to berate me about not replacing his sheets quickly. I had no idea how she found out since my husband doesn't call her. My sister-in-law called me to tell me that her mum installed a camera in the bedroom to see if I was taking proper care of her son. I was stunned. After searching the room, I found the camera and I called her and had a huge fight with her. She admitted it and said she was just feeling concerned and wanted to make sure her son was being cared for, despite him calling her every day. I yelled at her, telling her that she's no longer allowed into my home after this. She lost it and went on a rant about how I'm stopping her from seeing her son and that not seeing him will literally make her sick herself. The family called me later to get me to back out of this decision, but I told them she breached my privacy and took advantage of the situation. They said I'm taking it too personally and that I can't blame a concerned mother for wanting to make sure her son's fine, especially since she listed things she thought I was doing wrong. I ended the conversation, but my husband is upset, telling me I'm being vindictive and that if his mum can't come, then he'll move there with her. We argued, then I went outside, and he's been silent ever since. So, am I the butthole? Well, you know what, OP? I'm still firmly on your side, but that last sentence has confused me quite a lot. Does your husband actually want a camera to be in his room then? Is that what he's saying? Because I guess if that is the case, then you kind of have to do what he says. Ultimately, you are looking after him, and you have to have his best interests at heart. It's just a bit strange what he's saying. It seems as though he's not even giving one ounce of thought to what, to what you know, you're going through and the effect that his mum is having on you when you're the one that's putting in all the effort taking care of him 100% of the time and his mum is just doing nothing apart from picking on you and just saying do this better do that better it's very odd i, I was all set with what to say to this mum and say how in the wrong she was and how well you're doing op but that last sentence has confused me i'm a bit confused by your husband's response if i'm honest i mean this might be a little bit too far but if your husband is actually wanting to move back in with his mum then just let him I know it sounds harsh. You probably love the bloke. Who doesn't? Maybe this situation is the best thing to happen to you. I know it sounds horrible to say that, but maybe it is, as it makes you realize that this entire family are just a bit weird and you probably don't want to have kids with this man who wants to go and live with his mother. Am I being too harsh there on a guy that's that's broken his back or whatever? I don't know. Comment down below and let me know. Am I the butthole for asking my sister to stop fostering dogs so she could help me with my kids? Okay, just writing the title like that made me feel super guilty, but please hear me out before judging too harshly. I am a 38-year-old woman and I've got four kids aged 11 months, 3, 5, and 10. I love them all more than anything, but I'll be the first to admit that our house is constant chaos and it can get very exhausting. My sister, who's 33, is child-free, but loves my kids and was happy to watch the older two or sometimes three to help me keep my sanity. This has been extremely helpful and I tell her all the time how grateful we are for her help. The thing is that the kids used to go over to her house, but right now they can't because my sister is fostering an elderly chihuahua. My sister claims she can't have them over for the time being as they'd stress out the dog. Now this dog is extremely frail and timid, so I think that was a fair assessment. This was the fourth dog she's fostered, all of which couldn't be around my kids. This most recent dog took eight months to find a home for, but most of her other dogs took even longer. When she told me she found an adopter, I knew I could finally breathe a sigh of relief and joked about how I was glad she could babysit again. Then my sister proceeded to tell me that there was a second dog that desperately needed a new foster, so she planned to take in that one as soon as her current dog was gone, so she couldn't do any more babysitting than she already is. Sometimes she comes over to my house in the morning to help out i could literally feel my stress levels spike i haven't ever done this before but i opened up to her about how much i've been struggling since she got the dog how little sleep i get each night how my husband hasn't been helping as much as he should and some other deeply personal issues that i've been struggling with then i asked her point blank to not get another dog. She comforted me, but ultimately didn't agree on anything and said she needed some time to think. I know I'm asking a lot of her since rescuing dogs is her passion and that is why I feel so guilty, but I don't have anyone else to help me. I can't afford a babysitter long term and my friends all have their own kids to look after. Above all, my kids will always come before a dog and that's the reason I was willing to request it. I've told a few different people about the situation and got on a wide range of heavily biased opinions. 
So that's why I've decided to come on Reddit and ask you guys. Was this unreasonable? I would never demand her to do this if she didn't want to, but is it really so wrong to just be honest in my situation and earnestly ask? Wow, starting this video off with a butthole, in my opinion, guys. As always, get in the comments, let me know what you think. But for me, uh, yeah, sorry, OP, you're the butthole. Now, look, you say, above all, your kids will always come before a dog. And that's fine in your opinion, but it's not then fair to expect your sister to have the same opinion as you. Like, that might be the opposite for her. I mean, clearly, she's chosen not to have children in her life, and instead, she loves, it's her passion, as you say, to foster dogs and look after them, not to babysit your kids. As much as I'm sure she likes doing it for you, fostering dogs is her real passion. But you're saying that kids come before them maybe that's true for you but not for her if anything i want to know whether dad is in all of this your husband because he's the one that needs to step up and actually help you out look i get it having four kids is obviously an insane amount of effort but you can't just put all of that onto your sister who never made the choice to have those kids that was you and your husband's choice but where is he i don't know someone let him know that he needs to get in the mixer am i the butthole for telling my therapist lies because i suspected she was telling my husband what i was telling her during our sessions i started seeing a therapist six months ago because i had postpartum depression at first she really helped me but then i noticed on two occasions my husband mentioned things i hadn't told him but i had confided in my therapist since i had no proof and i didn't want to accuse either of them i decided to tell my therapist lies that i knew he would confront me on if he heard them to see if I was being delusional or not. The more I lied to her, the more suspicious I became too. Since even things I said that made my husband look awful were challenged by her and twisted to make him look good. It took a while for him to confront me, but he did. At first, he never believed I was lying during those sessions. But when I finally convinced him I was, he was still furious at me. He said he only wanted to make sure I was okay and he hadn't been using the therapist to spy on me. So, am I the butthole? Wow, this is so bad from both the therapist, obviously, primarily, but also your husband. Like, therapy has to be the most private thing or it doesn't work. The whole point is that you're talking through issues that you're having with the therapist and and really nobody else, I guess. Or at least you have to be confident that what you're saying at that moment in the room only stays in the room. It it doesn't work if if the therapist is telling other people. That's just ridiculous. Like, if anything, I swear it's actually illegal. I know it's your husband, but it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure that as a therapist, legally, you're not allowed to tell other people about your therapy sessions genuinely isn't that like a code of ethics or something for counseling i don't know if you know let me know in the comments but it seems like it should be illegal to stop this sort of thing happening because it's very very dangerous your husband should know better but this therapist is i think literally breaking the law oh and needless to say by the way if it wasn't completely obvious already op is definitely not the butthole and what you're doing is completely justified am i the butthole for keeping all the money from mine and my wife's baby shower my wife and i are having our first baby boy We're due in May, so we had our shower last weekend. Her family didn't really plan the whole thing, other than decorating. So I ended up purchasing a venue as I wanted to make a big deal of this to make my wife feel special. I spent 2.5K on this venue, which I was prepared to do and I was okay with. My wife wanted something smaller initially, but I wanted to do the co-ed thing and invite my friends and family too. After paying for the place, my account was depleted and I won't be paid again for two weeks. So I took all the cash we were given in car and deposited it into my account. We ended up getting about $1,600. So I only ended up paying less than $1,000 for the shower. Yeah, not entirely sure that's how it works, but okay. My wife is upset about this because she feels as if the money should be used for more baby things and not to pay myself back, as she put it. I told her I can't just have $0 in my account for two weeks. And she said I should have thought of that before booking such a big space for the shower instead of doing something smaller, like she originally wanted. She's also upset because a majority of the money came from her family I honestly just assumed any money we got was going into paying for the shower And she assumed it would be for whatever else we didn't get on our registry I can't help but feel like she's being ungrateful about the situation But I also possibly should have planned ahead so I wouldn't be left with no money I'll probably use the money on baby stuff anyway However, I need gas and food money as well So the question is Am I the butthole here? Yeah, this really doesn't look that good, OP. Sorry. Sounds as if to me, you've just spent way too much money unnecessarily on a baby shower that nobody apart from you really wants in the first place, especially not your wife. And now you're just trying to get the money back that you spent unnecessarily. Uh, It's a bit weird, isn't it? Just to be clear, you did the opposite of what your wife wanted to make her feel special, even though 
she didn't want that in the first place and then you're using the money that people were, were giving you know to support the baby and for you to buy the baby things to reimburse yourself so that you can buy food it is it is come on it's strange guys it is yeah let me know if you agree but uh for me definitely the butthole i'm at a butthole for getting mad that my artist hid their initials in my tattoo i went to a tattoo shop in my area with a photo of the tattoo i wanted it was one my dad had gotten to honor my past grandfather whose father also had it but the point is, it was important to me that the tattoo looked exactly as it did in the photo. I get to the shop, explain everything, pay, get the tattoo, and we're done. I think it looks awesome and everything is great, until a few weeks later, when I show my great-grandmother the tattoo. She's static, grabs my arm to look at it and compliments it, and then asks, who's AJ? I ask her what she means, and she points out on the tattoo where the initials A and J, or maybe T, were hidden i'm instantly fuming as i remember my artist name is alice trevor she tries to assure me it's no big deal if i hadn't noticed it till now but i still reached out to the artist sort of irritated they told me the style of art i got is called traditional and it's pretty trad for all artists who do that style to do it i demanded a partial refund and they refused so I complained to the owner who made the artist give me a full refund. Now the artist is running a full smear campaign, talking about moving shops and all kinds of rubbish. My sister says I'm a butthole for pushing the issue, but I feel like at the end of the day, I told you exactly what I wanted and you didn't do that. So am I the butthole? This is truly awful. It's one thing signing your name on some normal artwork, you know, not a tattoo that's on someone's body for life. You know, a painting, for example. If you've done it, sign your name, that's absolutely fine. And that is industry standard. It's not traditional, it's not pretty trad to sign your name on a tattoo, especially when you haven't got permission from the person's body you're tattooing in the first place. That is so poor. That's awful. Like, in my opinion, that is the same as somebody giving you, giving you like a stencil lever, a picture, saying, tattoo this on me, and then you do something different. Because that's what you've done here. You, you've said you're going to do one thing, and you've done something else different. That's mental. And, and I'm sorry, you should be not just fully reimbursed, but you could sue. You really could. That's there for life, unless you get it removed. That's literally there for life, something that you don't want on your body. That's awful. Like, if you think about it, they've branded you with their initials. That is mental. You're definitely not the butthole. They are. Get your money and 10 exit. Am I the butthole for asking my fiance to remove her adult actress friend from her wedding party? I'm engaged to my fiance and we'll be marrying in a few months. Right now, we're both still deciding our wedding parties. So she is very close friends with an adult actress. She used to work adjacent to that industry and made a lot of connections and this one stuck. The friend is well known. Like I'm not gonna say either her real name or stage name because she could be found very easily. Her face is also very recognizable to the point where if we go out to eat with her, she will inevitably be asked for an autograph. Now don't get me wrong, I don't disapprove of her at all. That's her business. She's great, but my family is staunchly religious. So much so that my mum said that if the wedding was not held in a chapel, she would not be attending. I know it's ridiculous, but it's my family. And it's not just her. It's that entire side with the exception of a few cousins and my siblings. So this is a problem because of how recognizable my wife's friend is. I'll fully admit that prior to meeting her, I'd watched a few of her videos just because of how viral they are. I'm sure other guys there will have seen her videos too. And if something gets mentioned or pointed out, it could cause so much drama that I really don't want to deal with on the wedding day. I also don't want attention to be taken off the woman I'm marrying because half the people there have seen one of the bridesmaids banging six guys at once. So when my fiance told me, I brought up my concerns and asked that she not make her actress friend a bridesmaid my fiance was not happy she told me that she is one of her closest friends and that she's not moving her out of our wedding just to appease my mother i told her that i want our day to go off without a hitch and this is just mitigating risk i also said that i felt that she owed me one because she vetoed a groomsman of mine because he cheated on someone in the bridal party she felt it was unfair and now we're at an ampass she told me that the way I was behaving was gross and that I was being a butthole. So, now here we are. Am I the butthole? 
Yeah, look, I'll be honest. I do kind of get your concerns, OP. You want everything to run smoothly. And I get that potentially there could be a tiny hiccup with this guest. But ultimately, it's your wife who wants her to be there, right? It's her friend, not yours. And she wants her to be a bridesmaid. I mean, that's above just a normal guest. You kind of got to go with your wife on this one or your wife-to-be anyway. The point about her owing you one because she vetoed a groomsman of yours doesn't make any sense because he cheated on someone that is going to the wedding. That's completely different to having a job. And yeah, look, I get it. It's an out there job. Fair enough. There might be some people going that recognize her, but that's still her job at the end of the day. That's different to cheating on someone else that's going there, you know? And also, sorry, I'm just rereading this. Your family is deeply religious, right? You've explained that. Yet you were going to have a cheating groomsman at your wedding. Not sure how that adds up, buddy. Not sure at all. Uh, so yeah, just to confirm, in my opinion, you are the butthole. Sorry. Am I the butthole for embarrassing my father-in-law after I repeatedly asked him to explain his joke to me? I am a 27-year-old woman, and I used to be an escort from 18 until 23. Now, I'm not proud of it, but I also don't give an F because I did what I had to do to keep studying and a roof over my head. That's how I met my fiancé, who was 37 though he was never my clients. We began to date when I was 25, and three or four months after that, his brother-in-law exposed me. No idea how he found out, because there's no way my fiance already knew, and thus we had to come clean in front of his whole family. Yes, I did that. Yes, he knows. Yes, he doesn't care. It was two years ago at that time. We got over it. After that, there was a span of three to four months in which my mother-in-law and some of my fiance's aunts and cousins police their husbands when I was around. It was really weird to be honest because the dudes were like 40 to 60 and I wasn't that desperate. So my fiance shut their BS down hard and even though his family still gives me the side eye from time to time, we thought it was behind us. He proposed last year and five months ago, we found out that I was pregnant. We were really happy about it and we told his family as soon as we knew. His sisters and young brother were happy for us, but his mum took me aside and begged me to be honest with her and asked if this was really my fiance's child. I was taken aback, but I just rolled my eyes and said yes. She gave me some trashy speech about how I only wanted to make sure and uh, I'm happy to be a grandmother. Well, last weekend, we were at his parents with his family and some of his friends and we were talking about the name, how he might look, you know, small talk. We'll love him regardless, but there's always some, oh, I hope he gets your nose. Mm, I like your eyes. I hope he gets them comments. And my father-in-law said that he and his children have a birthmark in the inner thigh and that even his grandchildren, one of my sister-in-law's kids, got them. So our baby might too. But then he said, but how can we know who he got it from? It may as well be from me, my boy, or my brothers. And he and his brothers began to laugh. My fiance got mad. And before he could say anything, I said, I don't get it. And my father-in-law said, yeah, because it runs in the family. And I said again, I don't get it. Why would he get it from you? And he began to get nervous and said, because, you know, it's just a joke. And I said, but I don't get it. And you all laughed. So explain. It got to the point that some of his friends said, hey, it's not funny. So he excused himself and left. Later, my fiance's brother-in-law came to me and said that I was wrong for embarrassing him like that in his own house And that I knew what the joke was about and because of my past I shouldn't be surprised Now they're all demanding that I apologize to my father-in-law Yeah, you're definitely not the butthole op and you know, you're not the butthole like this is actually crazy Well, this joke is so bad. What I do love though is that you've just said, even though of course you get it, I don't get it, explain it to me right now, like again and again, just embarrassing him to his face. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you make a joke at somebody's expense, you have to be able to deal with that. I'm sorry, you just do. I mean, he literally made a joke about him and other men from the family impregnating you. That is that is mental. I'm sorry. Like, this is a woman that's going to be in your family for life and you're making that joke. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you're obviously not the butthole for questioning that. Wow. Am I the butthole for refusing to make my husband apologize for what he said to my mum at the dinner table? So, I, a 31-year-old woman, recently got married to my husband, Scott. Before I met him, I was engaged to my former fiancé, Martin. But we broke it off because this relationship was sort of pushed by my family because he's a doctor and comes from a wealthy family. When our relationship ended, mum was devastated. She did her best to bring us back together. For example, she lied to Martin about me being pregnant to save us. That was years ago now, and we're all on good terms, including Martin. Mum, though, still has a bit of tension towards Scott. 
She treats him well, but constantly makes passive, nagging comments about him. She compares him to Martin all the time, which bothers both of us, but we try and let it slide. Mum kept telling Scott about the diamond ring, new car, and bank accounts Martin got for his fiance, and kept sending him photos saying how generous Martin is to his fiance, then compared him to Scott and what he'd done for me. I told her to stop doing this and she apologized. Last week, we were over at my parents' house for a social gathering. Lots of relatives came and we had dinner. At the dinner table, mum asked Scott if he saw the text she sent him the other day. He said he was sorry and that he didn't. She told him to check it right then and read it out loud so everyone at the table could hear. He took his phone and started reading the text out loud. Her text mentioned how Martin got his fiance a new house and how generous he was, then said that Martin is younger than Scott, yet able to buy a house basically shaming scott for his inability to buy a house she wrapped up by saying that martin maybe wasn't so bad for me after all i was shocked and scott was fuming obviously however he didn't lash out or anything he just looked at the text smiled and said you know what gets me about this entire text is how you were a public educator for 30 years yet you can't differentiate between the passive you and the contraction your Good God, the thought of all the children that must have been left behind. Everyone at the table burst into laughter and mum's face went pale. She decided to leave the table. Then she and my sister started yelling at me, saying Scott was being awfully rude and I needed to get him to apologize immediately for embarrassing mum at the table. I refused, then pointed out how she was being judgmental towards him. She defended herself, saying she was just letting him know and he had no confidence and took it personally. I left, but I kept getting told to talk to him and get him to apologize for what he did. All right, ending with a bit of a debate one then. Guys, before I even say anything, before I give my opinion, get down in the comments and let me know, do you think that OP is the butthole or not? And give me some reasoning. That's important. I will say that in this post, in this event on its own, in isolation, no, you're definitely not the butthole. But If you want to take it bigger picture, then maybe you are. Because it sounds as if this has been going on for a very, very long time. Your mother is clearly just uh, crazy, as is your sister. But your mother is especially just like uh, mental. Continuing to compare your husband to an ex of yours is actually crazy. Now, what makes me say that perhaps OP actually is the butthole is that it doesn't look like you've stopped this, right? This has been going on for years, I think. And you haven't at one point seemed to have brought it up that you don't want this to carry on. Look, I'm not saying fight your husband's battles, but also it is your mother. And look, as a guy, you obviously have to be polite to your mother-in-law so it's kind of up to you a little bit to say can you stop comparing my husband to my ex so weird in the first place i don't really think it should have gotten to this point in the first place really this should have stopped so many years ago so just saying that you refuse to apologize you could argue is not going far enough look it's good that you did that you didn't completely bend over but i think really you should have gone a lot further than this uh, many years ago guys what do you reckon Let me know in the comments. Am I the butthole for what I said after my husband commented on my flat chest? My husband Jared and I have been married for three years. He's currently out of work. He used to work at a high paying job, but got kicked out the company over a fight with a coworker. And I'm the one paying for rent and utilities. We dedicate some time to see his family weekly. They don't know he's unemployed because he thought they'll see him as a failure, especially his mum. So he told me to keep it a secret. Last night, we were sitting eating dinner at the table. His cousin was talking about his fiance going to Brazil to do a boob job. Jared asked if he was serious, then flattered his cousin's fiance's boobs, saying they're perfect and that he didn't understand why she'd get a boob job. He then turned to me and stared at my chest while I was eating, like an idiot. I've got a flat chest. I'm insecure about it, but I can't do anything about it, obviously. And said, hey, why don't you get a boob job? You're the one who needs it the most. His mum gasped and was like, Jared. I said, it's fine. I then turned to him and said, I'll get a boob job once you get an actual job since you've been unemployed for six months now. He stared at me in disbelief. His mum began questioning him about being unemployed and he denied, denied and denied, then admitted it was true. It got awkward with his mum scolding him and others shaming him for it and for hiding it. He got so overwhelmed, he went outside and stayed inside the car until I came. He started yelling at me repeatedly. You couldn't have held your effing tongue and accused me of turning his family against him and having them judge then shun him and now he can't even step a foot in their house 
from the shame and guilt. I argued that his comment about my chest was insulting, but he said he was giving me a piece of advice and that there's nothing wrong with him wanting me to look pretty and that he said what he said out of support and encouragement. But what I did was the complete opposite and that it was intended to hurt him and I succeeded. He dropped me off at home, then went to stay with his buddies. I called him later thinking he'd calm down, but his friends said he didn't want to speak to me and that I should give him space. And there we go. In my opinion, there is no way that you're the butthole OP. It's one of those, isn't it? You get an insulting comment from someone, you give it back and they can't take it. If you dish it out, you've got to be prepared to take it. It's as simple as that. Saying that you've got a flat chest is extremely insulting. There's no need for that. It's just downright disrespectful. So if you then reveal a secret that realistically he probably should have told his family anyway, seems fair enough in my opinion. Am I the butthole for treating my daughter-in-law like a child when she was acting like one my son and his wife have been staying with us for about a month now while they prepare to move into a new place in may my wife and i enjoy having them with us and for the most part my daughter-in-law is lovely but she is very messy i'm retired from the army and i've always run my house to a certain set of standards and i expect them to be followed even by guests my son has often described his wife as someone who prefers clutter and she generally likes to have things where she can see them But after I voiced my displeasure over the clutter in the guest bedroom they are presiding in, as well as in the guest bath they use every day, she did begin to decrease this amount of clutter, but not to the standards I would like in my home. My daughter-in-law still leaves her makeup out in the bathroom until she gets home in the afternoon because she runs out of time in the mornings to put them up. To her credit, she does clean everything once she gets home, but I don't appreciate having to stare at the mess for hours until she returns. I tried handling this privately with my son in hopes that he could talk to her. And while he did agree, he mostly made excuses about her behavior, equating it to an unstable home life growing up with incompetent parents and in the foster system towards her later teen years. I admit, she still is quite young at 20, but my kids knew how to clean up after themselves before they were out of elementary school. My frustrations over the situation grew to a head one day when yet again, she left that makeup in the bathroom. And in response, I took a trash bag and placed all of her makeup and everything underneath the sink that was hers as well in it. And then in the guest bedroom, every piece of clothing she owned, etc., in that bag. Now, I had no intention of actually throwing her belongings in the trash, but I wanted to show her how serious I was on the matter. And I thought maybe handling it how I would have handled a teenager would have given her a bit of a wake up call since she'd seemed to miss out on it in her childhood. My daughter-in-law came home before my son and when she discovered her things in the trash bags outside of the front door, I could tell she was rather shell-shocked. I didn't yell, but I was stern when I explained that her behavior had been very disrespectful and if it continued, she'd have to leave my house. My daughter-in-law didn't say much and just looked at me with wide eyes the whole time. And then when I was done, she apologized and took all of her things back inside the room she was staying in. I could hear her crying, which seemed to me to be dramatic. And when my son got home, he apologized for my daughter-in-law's messiness, but said the way that I handled the situation was too far. I told him it was my house and therefore my rules. Now my daughter-in-law has been keeping all of her things in her car and won't even place them in the house at all. She's also become very reserved when I'm around, but is completely fine around my daughters and wife. The mess stopped, but now there's an awkwardness in the house. And there we go, guys. Our first butthole of today's episode. Uh, Yeah, you're definitely the butthole OP. I'm sorry to say, by a mile. Why are you controlling someone like this? Another adult. It's, It's crazy. Look, I get it. It's your own home. And obviously, you have your own rules. That's fine. But you've given them the guest room and the guest bathroom. Like, that's their space. What they do with that space, as long as it's not completely ridiculous, is kind of up to them. If they leave their makeup out after getting ready and then clean it up when they come back later in the day, that's completely fine. What is wrong with that? In fact, I presume that's the most normal thing for people to do. If you're in a rush in the morning and you just want to get out, why clean up after yourself? Do it when you get back. It's the guest room. It's their space. Leave them to it, you weirdo. And also, putting her clothes in the plastic bags or bin bags and like faking that you're going to get rid of them? So odd. No wonder she's not talking to you. No wonder she's putting her stuff in the car. You're a freak. Am I the butthole for forcing my parents to disown my gay brother? Okay, context needed, obviously. I am a 28-year-old woman and I hate my 30-year-old brother. 
He was always the golden child. I was an oops baby and they never wanted a girl. Plus, I was a fussy baby compared to him. So I annoyed my mother. He hated me too and kept telling lies about me to my parents. If he stole something, he would blame me and they believed him. He sabotaged all of my relationships. He bullied me. He forced my friends against me and my parents always took his side. I left home for college. I managed to get a scholarship as soon as I could. He stayed in my hometown, renting a place near my parents, paid for by them, of course. They stopped contacting me. Our family group chat was always about my brother and his achievements and never sent me money. I live in another state now, married. My family was invited, but didn't even bother showing up for my own wedding and with a second baby on the way. My husband's family is great, so that's helping me a lot. Anyways, my parents are very traditional. Male head of the family, tradition, all this rubbish. So my brother coming out shocked them. They absolutely demanded blood-related descendants to carry on the family name. I should mention that me and my kids all have my husband's surname. Adoption is not an option. Neither is surrogating. They accept only proper marriage. So, out of the blue, my brother contacted me. Apparently, my parents will disown him. He lives off their money and has never worked unless he fixes the relationship with me so that they can lay claim to my children. Now, they say this since he is the reason I drifted away from my family. Now, he's not the sole cause. I do blame my parents too. He actually flew over to my states, cried a lot, blamed all the bullying on his stress from being in the closet, yada, yada. I told him to F off. My family is dead to me and I don't care about him. He's now saying how I'm petty and willing to ruin an adult's life over childhood slights. Also that I'm homophobic, etc. But I refuse to be back in contact with my parents as a backup source of blood-related grandbabies now that their golden child has failed them. So, am I the butthole? No, you're not the butthole for me. When someone comes back into your life demanding something and is only really talking to you because they need something from you, despite the fact that they've been terrible to you for the rest of their life, then no, you don't owe them anything. And look, it's unfortunate what's going to happen to your brother OP. I get that. It's a sad situation that your parents feel this way, but it's not up to you to, to change their mind, is it? In my opinion, yeah, leave them alone. Leave them to it. Also, your brother's saying that you're homophobic. Like, that is mental. Because you don't want to do something for me, oh, you're now a homophobe. Not at all related. Your brother's a bit of a joke i get it he's going through a hard time but come on you can't just demand something from someone then when they say no say oh because i'm gay you're homophobic that's insane am i the butthole for letting my mother-in-law and sister-in-law find our my husband's and mine bedroom toys because i suspected they snooped in my drawers my husband and i have been dating for six years and married for four We have a three-year-old baby boy, and since we don't plan on having more children, I told my husband that I wanted to get my boobs redone because I wanted them more perky, and I had surgery last year. My mother-in-law has always been sniffy because my husband is her only son. We've gone low contact over the years because she's overbearing with him and dismissing of me. Things got a little better when our baby was born, but after my surgery, oof. It's like I wrote on my forehead, look at my boobs, I wanna cheat on my husband. She's always implying that I did it for male validation. Yeah, your sons, for God's sake. That I'll leave my husband. That I look like a hooker because I wear stuff that shows cleavage. That I could have gotten them a little smaller. Everything. She also complains about my clothes and underwear a lot because no married woman with a child should dress like that. And see, that's what stung me. Because how could she know? I suspected she was going in my drawers, but my husband told me that she could never. She made a comment about a cute set of lingerie that shows basically everything, and I was so confused. I asked how she knows I have that, and she said she saw it in the washing machine. But I prefer to wash my sets by hand so the lace lasts longer. Anyway, we recently changed our bedroom, and I had an idea to put an end to this. When I was restocking my drawers, I used one in my vanity to put all of my husband's and my sex toys, as well as a few sets of lingerie and a dirty letter he wrote to me once. My mother-in-law visited us a few times and said nothing, so I did feel bad for accusing her. But yesterday, she was here with my sister-in-law and my husband and I were in the kitchen cooking for them. We heard my mother-in-law calling us and when we went to our room, they were standing next to my open drawer. I just snorted, looked at my husband and said, see, she snoops. My husband got red in the face. 
berated my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law and they both left after calling me indecent My husband is mad at them, but he's mad at me too Because he says I shouldn't have set a trap for his family and is saying that we three need to all apologize to each other So maybe i'm the butthole. Okay from your husband's perspective. I get it You're kind of humiliating his mum and his sister, but they deserve to be humiliated. There's no privacy there They're snooping through your things that is bad. It's just a drawer in your bedroom as well. Like they're acting as if you put a sex toy, I don't know, in a communal area. No, it's in your bedroom, in your private space. They shouldn't be looking there. And it's only their fault that they found it. They shouldn't be snooping. They're a disgrace. Am I the butthole for taking my baby to see my family against my wife's wishes? And then telling her she needs to see a therapist. We came home from the hospital five weeks ago with our first child, a boy. But for the next four weeks, my wife didn't let any of my family visit our son. However, her mother and sister came over several times a week. My wife refuses to let my family see him because she doesn't want to play host. My family understands that being a new mum is stressful and they have no expectations of being treated like proper guests. I told her it's not fair though that her family can come and go as they please, but my family can't even meet him. She said her family comes over to help her which isn't really true they just hold the baby a little and if the baby isn't sleeping then i'm the one taking care of him while they're here they don't clean or anything at most they might bring some takeout on the way over finally i decided i'll be taking the baby to see my parents last weekend my wife doesn't breastfeed so i got all the formula and diapers and everything i'd need for a couple of days and packed a bag I thought this was a win-win because my wife could have some time to herself or come along and she wouldn't be under any pressure to host anyone. But she got mad when I told her what I would do. But I told her this is happening. I'm the baby's father and my family has a right to see him just as hers does. She refused to come along and said she can't believe I'm treating a new mother this way. I left on Friday evening and I didn't hear anything from my wife on Saturday. But her sister and mum were over and they sent a bunch of texts basically accusing me of abusing a new mother finally on sunday she started sending me text after text about how i was a terrible husband how i'd kidnapped her son how a baby can't be separated from its mother etc it got so bad that i cut my visit short and drove home she was very mad when i got home and refused to speak to me The next day when the baby was asleep, I sat her down and tried to calmly explain to her that I am the father of the baby. So I have as much right to where he goes and who he sees as she does. We are equal parents and she needs to accept reasonable compromises when we disagree. Like my family being able to see our son and her not having to host them. She called me a butthole and shouted that she gets more say because she is the one who was pregnant with him. At that point, I said if she thinks that way and the accusation she texted me, I think she really needs to see a doctor and get assessed for PPD because her behavior is not normal. She called me a butthole and said that I was abusing my position as the earner. Money was never part of any discussion. She's been giving me a near silent treatment all week, resisting any attempts to discuss therapy. And her sister has texted me saying I should apologize to her for what I said. I told her sister that I'd said absolutely nothing wrong in response to being accused of kidnapping and being a lesser parent to my son. I'm standing my ground, but I need an outside perspective. Am I the butthole? Now, this one is probably our first contentious one of the episode. Look, get in the comments down below if you're watching on YouTube and let me know what you think because I think this one could go either way. Ultimately, I don't think both of you have performed very well here. Let's be realistic. On the one hand, it is quite frankly ridiculous that your wife is not letting your family come and see the new baby. I mean, that's mental. Imagine if you were in that position and you weren't allowed to go and see, I don't know, your son's new child. That's crazy. So that's, first of all, that is way too far, especially given that she's letting her own family come and see. Like, that's just not fair. However, then taking the baby away from your wife for a couple of days, that is a lot, isn't it? Look, I know you told her before you did it, but seriously, like that, if you just went and saw them for one afternoon or something, I could, I could maybe allow that a little bit more. But she's only getting her family over for a few hours at a time, it sounds like. To take the baby away for what, two or three days is what you were planning? That's a lot. That really is a lot. Now, the stuff about equal parenting, I do agree with. Look, I get it. She was the one who obviously held the baby, grew the baby in her stomach. I get it. But even still, I think that both parents and therefore both parents' families should be able to see the baby equally. I mean, that makes sense to me. Now, look, I get that might be a little bit 
controversial. Get in the comments. Do you agree or disagree with me? The comment about the therapist. Now, I feel like that might have been said, you know, with, with the good hearts, but it doesn't come across that way. It comes across as quite patronizing, to be honest. Um, yeah, probably not the best thing to say. You were a bit at the butthole for that OP. Overall, a very contentious one. I still don't really know where I stand. Just not a great situation. I'd rather this never happened. Am I the butthole for demanding my husband pay me the $1,000 he spent behind my back? My husband and I used to have a two income home, but in 2020, we lost our home and one of our incomes, his. We moved into a smaller apartment and had to sell many things and give up most of our costly habits. My husband has an expensive habit of going to the spa for a weekly massage session. We live in an urban area, so this stuff is ridiculously expensive. A single session is $250 and he has to have it every week. So that's nearly a thousand a month. I offered him to have his session at a regular spa, but no. He simply has to get it from that luxurious spa near the restaurant we used to go, saying the lady who gives the massage is an expert and he's used to her. The problem is that I'm the only income earner and I'm struggling to make ends meet. I'm also pregnant and I need to save the money to prepare a nursery. I told him to cut his sessions, but he refused. I told him I won't be paying for them anymore and he said he'd get the money himself. Yesterday, I checked and saw that he's been using my credit card for his sessions for a whole month and had maxed out completely. I found that out when I went shopping for baby essentials and the cashier said I had no money. I had to return everything, then went home and went off on him. I told him he maxed my card out and made me look like an idiot at the store. He said he didn't tell me because he knew I'd have an issue with it. I demanded he pay back the $1,000 he spent, but he refused. I yelled at him, calling him irresponsible, and he got upset and called me selfish and told me to stop playing victim and that this is affecting both of us since he's going to be a parent too and it's stressful for him and I keep dismissing his own needs as a human. Okay, sorry, I can't help but laugh at this. What am I reading? I went upstairs and he went out. He started giving me the silent, but I kept demanding the money back. He said I shouldn't expect it since we're married and that my money is technically his and I should stop using his unemployment against him. Well, I wonder if OP's the butthole or not. And uh, that's it, guys. The biggest butthole of this episode. We've saved the best to last in many ways, if you can call him the best. What a clown. I mean, first of all, $250 per week on a massage. If you're not getting a little bit more for that, uh, if you know what I mean, then it's not worth it. That's what I'd say. A thousand a month, $12,000 per year on massages when you're not even earning any money. You know what? If I didn't see it written down right here in front of me, I wouldn't even believe it myself. That is ridiculous. I had to laugh halfway through that. I literally had to pause the recording and start laughing because of how ridiculous that was. What a man. Like he's literally stolen from you essential money that you need for your child to buy a luxury item. Break up with him, probably, is the, is the uh, advice there. I mean, wow. I say it again, what a man. Am I the butthole for taking my daughter to get her hair cut when I knew it would upset my wife? Me and my wife have a little eight-year-old girl who I'll be calling Anna. Now, Anna has very thick blonde and curly hair that my wife adores. Ever since she was a toddler, she'd spend hours doing her hair every day braiding it, straightening it, and styling it in all sorts of ways. Our bathroom cabinets are always filled to the brim with a bunch of hair lotions, oils, creams, and other fancy products I don't even know the names of. So I think it's more than fair to say that my wife's a bit obsessed with the whole hair thing. Anna, however, has never been too fond of getting her hair done or of anything that involves having to sit still for more than a few minutes. Before she got it cut, her hair used to reach past her waist. And while it looked lovely, she hated getting it brushed and every morning used to be a screaming fest between her and my wife. Lately, she'd been begging for a shorter haircut. My wife ignored her whenever the topic was brought up in hopes that she forget about it, but none of that ended up happening. I think Anna realized she was getting nowhere with her mum because she started asking me to take her instead. Now, I was reluctant at first because I didn't know how my wife would react, but I agreed when I saw just how excited the kid was over something as simple as a haircut. So, yesterday, I drove her to the hairdresser where she got to flip through a lot of magazines and pick a picture of a haircut. And when she chose a really short clipper cut, I knew I was gonna be in deep trouble with my wife. At that point though, there was no turning back. I mean, what could I really have done? Told her that no, she can't get the haircut that she was so over the moon about, all because her mum wouldn't like it? No, I couldn't do that. So we went ahead with the haircuts, and by the end of it, Anna couldn't stop smiling. 
She went around the salon showing it off to everyone and even asked me to take a bunch of pictures Even though she normally hates having pictures taken of her We did get one rude comment from an older woman at the salon something along the lines of you can't even tell if she's a boy or a girl now But anna was way too excited about her hair to notice and if she did notice she didn't care when my wife got home from work that day though things quickly took a turn for the worse she refused to even look at anna she locked herself in her room and cried then got in the car and drove off it's been a day now and she's still not back it's honestly starting to worry me i knew she wouldn't react well to the haircut but i wasn't expecting her to take it this badly the kid's upset too and no matter how much i reassure her she still thinks she's gonna get in trouble for getting her haircuts so am i the butthole i realized how attached my wife was to anna's hair but at the end of the day i still think it's just hair the kid's old enough to decide these things for herself and she was really happy with the haircuts So I don't think I did something wrong here. No, I don't think you are the butthole. As you said, OP, your daughter is now old enough to decide what she wants to do with her hair. And it's pretty clear from what you're saying that she doesn't really enjoy having long hair. And she was so proud and happy with her new hair that the whole decision is completely justified. What I would say, though, is it is a shame that you didn't tell your wife about it because clearly it is very important to her. Now, look, it's easy to say that based on her resultant actions, it's clear she would probably not have allowed that and would have gone crazy. So, hey, maybe it is best you just did it secretly. It's a shame that she was so attached to her daughter's hair, but ultimately, I think you've come to the right conclusion. If your daughter is now more happy than she was in the first place, you can't really argue with that, can you? Am I the butthole for serving my husband's family mac and cheese for dinner? My husband is Asian and I am American, and we welcomed our firstborn four weeks ago. The baby is healthy, thank God, but I'm exhausted. I haven't fixed my hair, I'm barely able to shower, and I can't sleep. My husband's family had been pressuring us to visit to meet the baby. I tried to hold them off as much as I could, but yesterday I was surprised to find them standing on the porch. It turns out my husband had invited them over for dinner. I was embarrassed and I felt like I wasn't ready for visitors. Judgmental ones at that, because the house was a mess, guys. Anyways, my husband sat with them while I fed my son. Then later I asked my husband if we should order takeout for dinner. He said, no because his parents would find this rude and unwelcoming he suggested that i go inside the kitchen and prepare something anything as long as it's homemade i said all right fine then went and made some mac and cheese the reason i prepared this meal is because of how easy it is once i served the family my husband's mum looked at me and was appalled i noticed something was wrong she asked if i really found it appropriate to serve her and the family mac and cheese I asked why not and she went on a rant about how disrespectful this was and that I clearly have no experience in what is right and wrong when it comes to hosting. I said, excuse me? Who said I signed up to host an expected visit from them and then she took it as in I didn't want them there? Her husband said they were just there to finally see the baby that I kept them from seeing for an entire month. That's a whole month of his life they missed out on. We had an argument and they decided to go home. My husband said that deciding to serve his family mac and cheese was more offensive than serving them nothing at all. I told him I was too exhausted to cook their traditional feasts that I was forced to learn from his mum. He took offense and said that I was being mean and disrespectful towards not only his family, but his culture. I went up to the bedroom to stay with my son. My husband stayed on the phone with his family for an hour, then kept giving me the cold shoulder and refused to eat what I cooked in support of his family. I understand how some guests might find it offensive, especially his family, but I was just trying to make a quick homemade meal like my husband wanted. What's wrong with mac and cheese? Well, let me tell you, nothing at all. All right, first of all, what is wrong with mac and cheese? Because personally, it's one of my favorite dishes. It's so easy, it's simple, and by the way, it tastes delicious. Nothing wrong with it. Why are you getting complaints? I mean, this is before we even mention the fact that you've just given birth, you're dealing with a newborn, you know, you're barely sleeping, etc., etc. Your life is incredibly hard right now, and mac and cheese is an easy thing to make. Before we even get to that, there's nothing wrong with making mac and cheese in the first place. Now, on top of that, you didn't even know they were coming around in the first place. You've been asked to make a meal, even though you're extremely tired and dealing with a newborn etc etc pretty much loads of things here are out of place and are downright disgusting if you couldn't tell like this isn't even a culture clash these people are just buttholes why do you have to make their food for them they're in your house like forget again all the stuff about being a new mama it doesn't even actually matter really they're in your house expecting free food as guests but they're also telling you what to make them no 
That is butthole behavior. Am I the butthole for telling my brother's wife she is responsible for his health declining? My 30 year old brother is diabetic. He has type 1 diabetes and has had it from since he was young. As his older sibling, I grew up watching my parents manage this condition for him. He's always been traumatized by it and has never come to terms with it. So what he used to and still does is act like his condition doesn't exist. The family, mum is now deceased, didn't know how to handle it. Because if we let him act like that, then there would be major consequences. So we took it upon ourselves to manage his condition for him. We'd watch his eating habits and correct them, watch his insulin intake and encourage him to live healthy. When he brought his now wife home, we told her how it is and that he can be reckless and in denial about his condition. And so she needed to help and work with us and keep an eye on him. Now she did her best at first, but eventually she started to cave into his complaints about not being able to eat this or that, or when he complains about his insulin intake and having to pay for it. He's got increasingly worse the past three months. We didn't know exactly what was going on till his wife called us to tell us he was in hospital because of a hyperglycemic episode. His blood sugar levels were too high. He almost went into a diabetic coma. The reason for this was because he wasn't taking the right dosage of insulin. I talked to his wife and had an argument with her. She said he deliberately kept stretching out his insulin dosage to be able to save insulin and then not have to buy it. I told her she still should have kept an eye on him. It's unfortunate that their insurance is screwed and their financial situation is rough, but she should have stopped him and not just stood there watching. She said I was being too hard on her, but I told her that if he was doing this under the family's watch, we wouldn't have allowed it. And so she bears part of the blame for him being in hospital. She started crying and asked for a minute for herself. I went home because I couldn't see him after waiting for so long. My dad called later asking about my conversation with my sister-in-law. I refrained from talking about it, but he said that she called him and told him everything. He said I shouldn't have said this to her and made her feel so guilty. I said I was just disappointed that she let this happen and I expected her to be the responsible one if my brother wasn't. Dad said I have to apologize, but I'm unsure whether I was completely at fault here. I feel there's a bit of neglect on her part. All right, well, this story ultimately is just quite sad, really, isn't it? I'm not going to say on behalf of your brother that what I think he is doing or how he's acting is weird, even though I kind of do, but I don't really know how it feels, so I couldn't really comment on that. What I do think is unfair, though, is that you're putting so much pressure on his wife to deal with something that, in reality, he should be dealing with himself. I don't think it's fair to just say, oh, my brother doesn't care about this, but you have to care about it. Like, that doesn't really make any sense. Look, no doubt it's nice of you and your family to have cared and looked after him for all these years but then putting all that pressure onto just one person who didn't really know what they were getting themselves in for yeah it's unfair i agree with your dad i'm sorry i mean like ultimately (laughs) your brother just needs to deal with it i get it it's not a nice thing to to be diabetic but hey the person editing this video right now steve-o is diabetic has type 1 diabetes and guess what He deals with it himself very well. So there you go. Am I the butthole for the email I sent to a teacher about her you have to include everyone rules, saying that was a dangerous lesson? My daughter is 12, and I'm trying to teach her ways of creating and respecting her boundaries that are age appropriate, teaching her that it's okay to say no to things that she feels uncomfortable with. There's a boy in her class who keeps bothering her and her female friends at recess. I've encouraged her to go to me or her teacher when this happens. My daughter told me a few days ago that in class, the teacher had asked the kids to form groups of about four or five. She had formed a group of five with some other girls. Then the boy who'd been giving her trouble at recess came over and said he was joining their group. Another girl said that they already had five and that he should work with the group who only have two or three people. He said no because the teacher had said about four or five. My daughter then said that they didn't want to work with him and he should find another group. A few of the girls agreed with her. He said, you can't exclude me like that. It's against class rules. And my daughter said she didn't care. Now, obviously, I heard about this from my daughter first. But the way she spoke about it, it sounded like she'd been firm, but not unkind. But then I got an email from her teacher saying she wanted to call. She said there had been an incident at school where my daughter had excluded another child and that wasn't allowed in her class and she wanted me to have a talk with her about it. Her telling of events was the same as my daughter's. I felt proud of my daughter for her honesty. So I replied to her email saying, Dear Mrs. Teacher, 
I'm sorry, but that is not a lesson I feel comfortable teaching my daughter. She's at the age where she is already having to deal with unwanted attention, and I'm making a point to teach her that she doesn't have to be around anyone who makes her uncomfortable, and that a young lady is able to choose to spend time with people who make her feel respected. I understand you are already aware that that boy has been behaving in ways that she feels uncomfortable with at recess from our prior conversations. I think it's a very dangerous lesson, in fact, to teach a girl that she has to include and be kind to everyone instead of teaching her to be aware of when someone is not respecting her no and stepping out of the situation. I hope I don't have to explain in too much detail why I find this important. But to put it briefly, I was brought up with the include everyone mindset, no exceptions. That taught me to ignore my own comfort level. And as I became a young adult, I became the victim of men who used my inability to say no to their advantage. It's a dangerous lesson and no longer appropriate at that age. Thank you, OP. She emailed me back asking for a meeting in person with the principal. I'm preparing for that, but I'm wondering if my email was too harsh. So, Am I the butthole for my response to my daughter's teacher? Yeah, uh, this teacher is embarrassing. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right, OP. The lesson that you're telling your daughter is far more important than the one the teacher is, is, you know, trying to tell. What is she actually saying here? If you don't like somebody and they've been horrible to you in the past, you can't say no to them. That is like actually very dangerous as you say your lesson is way better you know learning that if you're uncomfortable in a situation you can say no and you can get out of it for your own good sometimes you've got to be selfish this geezer this little kid is clearly a little rat no one wants him around especially not a group of girls that he's been horrible to in the past. He needs to learn as well that you can't just get away with this sort of stuff and then continue to do it. I I don't understand this teacher. Bad teaching, that's for sure. And also, the teacher knows what this boy has been doing and has done nothing to stop it. The more I think about it, guys, the more I think this teacher is actually just terrible and needs reporting and shouldn't be teaching. Her lessons are backwards and straight up trash. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Am I the butthole for telling my brother and his boyfriend to stop misleading people with their wedding rings when they're not actually married i am a 26 year old woman and i've got an older brother who is 27 who's been dating another guy a 30 year old for around four years now i don't have an issue with my brother being gay but i do have one with him wearing a wedding ring in order to pretend that he's married you see we live in a country where gay marriage still isn't allowed romania But despite this, my brother and his boyfriend started wearing wedding rings recently. When I asked my brother about it, he told me that despite not being able to do it legally, they already consider themselves married spiritually. And they're hoping that one day gay marriage will be allowed legally as well, either by leaving the country or waiting until gay marriage is made legal in Romania. While I think this is nice, I told them that they shouldn't be wearing wedding rings till they actually get officially married as I think it's kind of distasteful. He told me that they're just a symbol of their love and that they're not hurting anyone by wearing them. But I disagreed. They are actively misleading people into thinking that they're actually married and frankly, just making a mockery out of marriage. My brother told me that he doesn't care what other people, including me, think about them wearing wedding rings and maybe they should just mind their own business. Then he left furiously. Not gonna lie, I think his comments here were kind of out of line, as all I did was give my opinion on people wearing wedding rings when they're actually married, and he seemed to take it personally. His boyfriend also contacted me later and told me that their romantic lives does not concern me and to stay out of it. So, am I the butthole? Uh, yes, you definitely are. Obviously. Your brother and his boyfriend are clearly absolutely right. What they choose to wear on their fingers is up to them. It doesn't matter what you think. It's their lives. Also, what is wrong with just wearing a ring on your finger and showing that it's an appreciation of your love for somebody else? It's actually, quite frankly, as I'm sure the majority of you would agree, disgusting that these guys can't get married in their own country. That's an archaic law. It'll be changed soon. It's guaranteed. And when it is, they'll get married and you won't complain so them taking the mick or making a mockery of marriage is just ludicrous what's actually making a mockery of marriage and of just life in general in society is the fact that romania doesn't allow gay marriage yet that's really taking a mockery let's be honest like it's just this homophobic isn't it ultimately i don't know if that's going a bit too far here but that's the way i look at it it's disgusting why is it that you think it's unfair that they have rings on their fingers if these people were straight not engaged not married but were going out with each other and they had rings on Would you be saying the same thing? OP, if you're watching, get down in the comments 
Let me know, you cheeky bastard. Now, I don't think I've actually mentioned this before, but my uncle is gay. And turns out he's actually married to another man. Uh, that's how being gay tends to work. But yeah, for a long time, they couldn't get married. Now it's become legal for them to get married. And they went and got married in Germany. They couldn't get married, though, in Poland. Because, you know, still have these silly rules. But I would never have cared if they wore some rings on their fingers. Because guess what? It's none of my business. And also, it's a ring. Crazy, I know. Am I the butthole for not scheduling the new hire's vacation? I'm the manager of a small team at a large company. Each manager does their team schedule. I hired Lacey last week. Lacey told me when she accepted the job that she already had non-refundable vacation plans at the end of May. I told her that I did the schedule and would try to accommodate her. I couldn't accommodate her at all. There's already another team member out. I put up the schedule and was very surprised at an email from Lacey regarding her vacation not being scheduled. I informed her we didn't have the flexibility and that she was expected to work. When I went to my lunch break, I walked by Lacey's desk and was surprised to see it packed. She handed me her lanyard and told me she quit. She said that she wasn't losing out on two and a half thousand dollars and that she already had an offer from one of those jobs she turned down that promised her vacation was safe. I'm now being called into my boss's office because she quit so fast. But in my experience, if you start a new job, you understand that you are last for vacation. My fiance says that I'm an idiot and she was telling me, not asking me. Yes, you are, obviously. What new hire is gonna give up two and a half thousand dollars just so they can do their job at yours? How long is it gonna take them to earn that two and a half thousand dollars back? I don't know, but a long time. You also made it sound as if you'd accommodate her and you didn't, that's bad enough. Am I the butthole for giving my husband a fake key when he demanded to drive my car? I am a 31-year-old woman, and I became the only income earner after my husband, Jeff, who is 35, lost his job about nine months ago. He doesn't have a car anymore because he sold it to be able to pay off debts. He started asking to drive my car with the excuse of wanting to look for a job. There are two problems with that. First is that I'm a nurse, I work odd hours, and I need my car most of the time. And he literally takes it all day and comes back late in the evening. Second is that every time he comes home, the car either has a busted taillight, damaged fronts, flat tires, etc, etc. So far, I had to spend nearly 300 bucks to get it back in good shape. I told him I no longer want him to take my car, but he said I had to let him drive it so he could continue to look for a job. I told him he could search online, but he said something about scammers trying to pose as potential employers just to get his personal info. We've never had this happen to us. Days ago, he went out with my car and I ended up being late for my shift. I called a friend to cover for me and tried to call him, but he returned home at midnight. I had a fight with him after he said he was with friends and time passed by. I took the key out the car and put it under my pillow, then went to sleep. The next morning, I saw him standing near the bed, wanting me to give him the car key so he could look for a job. I said no, but he got mad and started demanding I hand it over. I told him fine and pointed towards the sock drawer where we had lots of junk and told him it was there. I lied and he got some old key that looked like my car key. Once he walked out, I locked the door and got in bed. A few minutes later, he came back and started pounding on the door, asking if I gave him a fake key. I said I did just to get him off my back. He started yelling at me, saying I was being childish and demanded I open the door and give him the real key. I remained in bed while he kept yelling outside, saying I'm giving him loads of rubbish for not working yet and not willing to let him effectively look for a job. He also said that I'd been testing his patience several times and he's had about enough. He yelled some more, then left. I was so infuriated and just maddened about the whole situation. I had a shift to cover, and I knew that if he took the car, he wouldn't bring it back in time. I got to my work, and we haven't talked. He was in a full sulking mode after I returned, and he kept ranting about how unsupportive and childish I was to pull this stunt. Yeah, not gonna lie, your husband seems pretty weird. First of all, his logic about not wanting to go online because of safety and security is a bit odd, and also the fact that he's saying he's gonna go door to door to look for a job and needs your car for that i'm not sure about that it's 2022 after all what's more telling is that the vehicle is always damaged like what could be going on there get your comments in i have no idea but wow what is this guy up to i have no idea safe to say you're definitely not the butthole and giving him a fake key and getting him out of your room was the best thing you could have done Am I the butthole for making a pregnancy jar? My husband and I have been married for six years. We still don't have kids. We want them, but it's still not happening. Friends and family are causing us constant stress about having a baby soon, but it's obviously something we can't control. We only wish that they'd stop, 
but to no avail so what i did was come up with this idea stupid i know and that is i have an empty jar and call it the pregnancy jar i carry it with me in my bag whenever i'm with friends and family and every time someone asks about when my husband and i are gonna have a baby i pull my jar out and ask them to drop a dollar in there for asking i'd get puzzled looks but they'd reach out for their pockets wallets purses and pull out a dollar and put it inside the jar it actually worked because most of them stopped asking after about four months last week we had dinner at my parents house my brother came back from his business trip that lasted a month and while eating he asked when me and my husband were going to have a kid my husband paused i got up from the chair and made my way to where my brother was sitting with my jar in my hand and asked him to drop a dollar for the question he asked he stared at me then laughed nervously asking if i was being serious everyone was looking at us he said no he didn't have to pay me but i told him he didn't have to ask either so here we are i could tell he felt embarrassed he immediately reached out to his pocket, pulled out his wallet and put a dollar in my jar. I made my way back to my seat and sat down and resumed eating like nothing happened. It got awkward afterwards. Mum pulled me into the kitchen later to tell me that I embarrassed my brother in front of his wife and family and said that I should quit acting childishly by running around with a jar demanding others put money in it. I told her they should quit asking then. She went on about how they're just worried for us since we're in our mid-30s and we don't have much time left if we want at least one healthy baby. I got upset and she started arguing. My husband and I left and we haven't seen them in days. Except I got a call from my sister basically siding with mum and the others saying I'm being childish. So, am I the butthole for this? Also, a quick couple of additional points. One, this has been going on for years, but in the past year, it's gotten worse. Two, I already told them about how I feel regarding this question. My husband doesn't care much and says I should let it go, though. Three, yes, they pay every time because it's just a dollar. It won't make me any richer or them any poorer. And four, my husband and I spend the money on snacks to eat every night when watching TV or some toys for the dogs. Okay, wow, I actually love the idea of this. This is just brilliant because can you imagine if you really want kids, it's, the, it's your number one one in the world and you can't. You try for years, you try everything, you and your partner devastated that you can't. Yet still, people that know about this continue to ask you questions like, when are you having kids? That's gonna be so unbelievably painful. Now look, if you do these things with your friends the first time, and strangers for example yeah that's a bit too much but when it's your parents and close friends and family that know this stuff and continue to ask these sort of questions yeah i think this is a good incentive for them to stop asking such painful questions i think to be fair the pregnancy jar is made legitimate by the fact that your friends and family continue to pay a dollar if they didn't think it was fine they wouldn't do it so i think by doing that they're accepting that they shouldn't be asking these questions yet they continue to do so and you keep making dollars i love it am i the butthole for returning the shoes i got for my husband after he accused me of stealing from him i am 29 years old and my husband who is 36 is the breadwinner of the family i stay home with the kids who are preschool age he pays for the mortgage bills household needs food kids needs etc he has a set monthly budget for each category and handles getting everything done recently he's become overwhelmed and told me to handle grocery shopping but before he let me, he asked me to write a list of all the stuff we need so we could calculate the total and also so he'd have an idea of how much I'll be spending when I take his credit card. I didn't have an issue with that because this way we'd watch our spending habits. However, he said I'm never allowed to get something that isn't on the list unless I'm paying for it some other way. On Friday, I was doing some grocery shopping as usual and saw that the store had some nice shoes on sale. The price was insanely low for this brand and so I decided to grab a pair for my husband thinking he'd be happy with them since he needed some new sneakers anyway. I bought them and when I showed them to him, he flipped out on me, saying I made a huge mistake by buying something that was not on the list. I agreed with him, but I thought that since the shoes were for him, then it would be different. He said I screwed up though and shouldn't have bought those sneakers without even telling him. But in my defense, I said that the price was low, so it's not like I spent a hundred bucks on shoes. And I also saw this as a great deal and wanted him to have those nice sneakers. He plainly said that what I did is considered stealing since he never consented to have those sneakers purchased and said that I'm being irresponsible with money and that's why I no longer have an income and my spending habits need a grip. I felt hurt by what he said. We argued about it for hours and he avoided speaking to me for the rest of the day. The next day, I went and returned the sneakers and took the money back. 
He got home in the evening and lost it when he found out I returned them He said he couldn't believe how petty and childish I was to actually do this I explained I was just correcting my mistake He tried to contact the store and was told the sneakers were already sold He even got angrier with me But I told him that he accused me of stealing for him when I was just trying to do a nice gesture for him He yelled that I had a lot of nerve calling what I did a nice gesture while using his money to do it I told him he had no right to yell at me after I corrected my mistake and gave back the money he accused me of stealing. He threw a fit, then went out with friends and came home late at night, still not talking to me. Did I mess up? Maybe I shouldn't have purchased them, knowing they weren't on the list, but I just wanted him to have those sneakers and thought I was doing a nice gesture. All right, this just screams control freak to me. Uh, The fact that you're even saying at the end here that you think you may have screwed up by not buying something on the list that you, you cannot go outside of, even if you find something that you like, or let alone a gift for him. Yeah, control freak right there. Who would do that? Say, if you get one more thing that is not on this list, I will accuse you of stealing. I get it. It's his money and everything. Everything, but that is ludicrous genuinely i actually lost count of how many red flags there were in this story i mean the list itself is unbelievable you try and defend yourself he was just like no none of that even then when you went out of your way to correct the mistake that obviously isn't a mistake but to your husband it is you were then met by even more backlash it is crazy Look, i don't know the bloke but to me it screams get out of there am i the butthole for refusing to pay for a girl's wig after she shaved her head because of me there's this girl that lives in my uni halls we're not roommates but we are flatmates let's name her kaya she's 19 i am also 19 and i met her in september when we started university and moved into halls we're not best friends but we are friendly we don't really spend much time together over time my friends noticed that kaya tried to copy me in everything it started slowly accessories and some clothes nothing major I didn't even notice it until people started pointing it out to me I have a rather distinct style and she started copying it I don't own the style and she's free to wear what she likes But it's the exact same copies of my outfits, which is very odd, but then it started going further I dyed my hair. She dyed her hair. I bought something for my room. She bought the same thing for hers I started chatting with a guy. She became obsessed with that guy to a point that whenever I had a male friend or guy I was interested in over, she'd go out of her way to try and get their attention, coming down to the kitchen in nothing but a towel. Now, don't get me wrong. I couldn't care less if the guy was looking. And even if it was my boyfriend looking, I'd have a beef with him, not her. But the blatant attention-seeking behavior was just odd. I joined societies and sports, and after she found out, she joined the same ones that I did. Basically, everything I do, she copies eventually. It's just really creepy, but I've not said anything. I wouldn't even know what to say. Over the Easter break, my friend and I were at my family's house, a bit drunk, and decided to test out whether Kaya really copies everything I do. I made a post on social media about shaving my head. My friend does hairdressing and she helped me out faking the shaved head and I posted a photo with the shaved head. I deleted the photo a few days later and forgot about the whole thing. After Easter break was over, we had uni exams and I was focusing on that. Imagine my shock when I came back and Kaya had shaved her head and she was fuming when she saw me. She started shouting how I lied to her and why would I do that? She went on and on and on, really angry. Admittedly, I ignored her and hid in my room. She sent me a text telling me that she expects me to pay for her wig, as it's my fault that she shaved her head. I replied that absolutely not, it was not my fault, and she decided on her own to do that. She kept attacking me over it every time I saw her. It's been a few days since I came back from Easter break. My exams start tomorrow, and yesterday I received an email from my university asking me for a meeting over the issue. She reported me to uni over something she's done. I'm genuinely confused. Was I really in the wrong? Am I the butthole for pretending to shave my head and refusing to pay for her wig? No, there's no way you're the butthole there. It's just very strange behavior from this girl is all I can say, really. Why is she copying your every move? That's odd. You didn't shave her head. She shaved her head. That's on her. And now she's got a shaved head. Nothing wrong with being bald, but uh, yeah, you did that yourself. Am I the butthole for sending my coworker into anaphylactic shock? I'm at a loss here, guys. Realistically, I know I'm in the clear. Legally, I'm in the clear, but I'm being vilified by my coworkers 
and I'm genuinely considering quitting my job because of this mess. So I work a pretty standard day job and at night I help my friend at her restaurant, which serves an assortment of Thai cuisine. To be honest, I'm insanely picky, but I fell in love with this peanut sauce the main chef makes and he showed me how to make it. So about once a week, I take it on either noodles or stir fry to my day job for lunch. People know this and a handful have tried it. It smells nutty. It tastes nutty. It's white girl pad thai, basically. Lately, my lunches have been disappearing or I'll open my lunchbox to find half my food missing. I've tried addressing it, but nothing has changed and I'm pretty sure it was one of the new hires that was doing it, but I had no proof until now. On Thursday, I took my noodles and my entire Tupperware was missing, which hasn't happened before. I'm fuming, but what can I do? A co-worker shared her pizza with me and that was that until today. My boss confronted me and accused me of poisoning my noodles because his daughter, one of the new girls, borrowed my lunch and had to be hospitalized. It turns out she's severely allergic to nuts, ate some and boom, anaphylaxis. She used an EpiPen and had to be hospitalized. And now her dad is trying to hold me accountable for her bills and condition, but I don't see it. Why should I pay? I don't mark my food as an allergen because I'm not allergic to it. She was just dumb enough to steal from me and eat something she can't have. But he is being hateful and some of my older co-workers are icing me out because I warned him I'd report any harassment to HR if he tried anything funny. Brown noses, I guess. My friend is aware and offered me a full-time job, but I just can't help but feel it's unfair. At the same time, I guess I could have killed his daughter though. So, am I the butthole? Similar to the first story, you didn't force your co-worker to eat your food. They ate it themselves. You're definitely not the butthole. They are. Can you imagine if every time you ate nuts or something that someone else could be allergic to, you had to label it as a possible allergy? God, that would be horrible. How about just don't steal someone else's food? Bit of advice there. What we've got here, by the way, is classic nepotism from your boss. That behavior is shambolic. Go to HR, let them know what's going on, that it's pretty disgusting, and keep making your pad tie. Who cares if you're a white girl? Do it. Am I the butthole for taking away my daughter's bedroom and giving it to my son? I am a 32-year-old man, and I have a daughter, Harper, who is 14, from a previous relationship. I have full custody, and her mum is not involved in her life. Five years ago, I married my wife, Nina. We tried to have a child, but couldn't. We went to the doctor, and it turned out I can't have any more kids due to some complications. We decided to use a sperm donor, and the result was a son, Mark born a few months ago. The problem started when Nina got pregnant. Harper wasn't happy about it. When Mark was born, things got worse. Before this, Harper and I used to spend two days a week together, just the two of us without my wife. But after Mark was born, I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't just leave my wife alone for two days a week with a newborn, and Harper has been very angry about it. The main problem started three days ago. Nina and I decided to make a nursery for Mark instead of having him in our own bedroom for multiple reasons. Our home has four bedrooms, two master bedrooms at one side and two bedrooms at the other side. One of the master rooms is ours, the other one is Harper's. It was very hard for Nina and I to go to the other side of the home multiple times at night when Mark wakes up. So I asked Harper to pack her stuff and go to one of the other bedrooms so that we could give her room to Mark. At first, everything seemed all right. She said okay and went to her room and started packing. But less than an hour later, my brother showed up at our home asking for Harper. She had called him and asked him to take her. She came out of her room with her stuff and told me, you can give it to your son now, and left with my brother. I told her she could only go for one night, but it's been three days and she's not back and won't even talk to me. I'm receiving calls from my family, all calling me a butthole and some other names. I don't trust their judgment. They very clearly favor Harper. She was the first grandchild in our family and everyone's favorite. Also, they're trying to accept Mark as my son, but I could see that they haven't been able to yet. So I decided to post here and get some unbiased opinions. Guys, am I the butthole? Yeah, this is really poor. And uh, guys, we've definitely met our first butthole of the episode. Let me know if you agree in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. But for me, there's no doubt about it. You are a butthole here. Are you telling me you can't just walk like, I don't know, two meters across a corridor to go and see your baby? Like, how big's a corridor? That's my question. Big enough to force your daughter to move room. The same room that she's lived in for a while. Like, it's weird. It really is. I mean, that's on top of the fact that you've already told your daughter you can no 
longer spend time with her uh, it's interesting parenting is all i'll say don't get me wrong it's a shame that she's not keen on the new child but that's no reason to then just take her room away from her that's just unfair am i the butthole for giving a very silly ugly smile in meetings after my boss said i should smile more i work in a tech consulting job i'm the only woman on the team and my boss told me i was coming off harsh with clients and should be more upbeat and smile more it felt ick i right away texted my group chat of co-workers without the management in it asking has boss man ever told any of you guys to smile more it was an immediate round of no's and a couple of my co-workers asked if he said that to me and pointed out the double standard a few of my co-workers joked that some of the clients we have right now don't give them anything to smile about so then i asked if any of them had ever been called harsh and it was again all knows i told them that our boss had told me to smile more and one of my co-workers sent me a picture of a girl pulling a silly face with a weird pinch smile and bug out eyes saying well what boss man says he gets i thought it was hilarious and decided to actually do it so i started smiling more and more around my boss but also a bit stupidly just keeping my mouth pinched tensely gums on display and purposely pulling my chin back towards my neck so i'd get a double chin i never did it in front of actual clients just my boss and co-workers who were in on the joke and my boss kept looking uncomfortable when i did he asked me at a meeting about a week in what that face i was pulling was i said uh what face he said that one just a second ago and my co-worker said what she was just smiling what are you getting at her for my boss said it looked like she was pulling a face and my other co-worker pulled out his phone where he had some pictures from a recent happy hour where i was pulling that face to make my co-workers laugh and he said dude what the heck is wrong with you that's literally her smile look at this picture from last friday and all of my co-workers backed him up saying that was just how i smile my boss looked kind of incredulous so i clarified that if something makes me spontaneously laugh or grin it probably looks a little more relaxed but when i'm just putting on a smile to be polite or pose for a picture i guess that's how i smile and i was trying to be polite after he let me know i was coming off harsh in meetings anyway at my next one-on-one -on -one meeting my boss said i didn't need to change my demeanor that much based on his comments because honestly it was coming off disingenuous and that would look worse in front of clients i just said yeah i guess i've never really been good at being super peppy without it looking fake and as far as i know that was the end of it except for it becoming a running joke of the office that i looked like nigel thornbury which is a pretty smashing nickname, honestly. But I do feel a little bad that I basically gaslit my boss and my co-workers were in on it instead of being direct with them and just saying that he was coming across a little bit sexist. So, am I the butthole for my fake smile thing? There is no way that you're the butthole in this situation, Opie. And, and what's more, I really want to see the smile. Unfortunately, there's been no picture linked with the smile, but you can imagine it, can't you? The boss just going, yeah, not really what I had in mind. Maybe stop doing that. What I must say, though, is your co-workers are unbelievable for getting behind you. You shouldn't feel bad. Like, your boss was the one who said something so ludicrous. Yeah, look, smiling is great and all, but don't, like, force someone to do it like this. That's just too much. At the end of the day, it's just good malicious compliance. Your boss asked you to smile. You did. What can you say? Am I the butthole for buying my girlfriend a blender instead of the necklace she wanted for our anniversary before i start i'd like to say that my girlfriend and i are both women we are lesbians i said this to hopefully preempt the typical man comments this happened last month but my friend and hers are still giving me trash about it we had our one year anniversary i asked what she wanted and she told me just something romantic a little necklace or something cute while browsing around on amazon i found an emulsion blender and it pinged in my head my girlfriend loves cooking and always talks about all the gadgets she wants plus she made homemade tomato sauce and i remember her complaining how hard it was to make the sauce smooth because she didn't have an emulsion blender now i'm a very practical gift giver I like to give things that people will use so i bought it and was super excited to give it to her the day rolls around and she gives me a bottle of whiskey i've had my eye on for ages but could never justify the cost i was so hyped and encouraged my girlfriend to open her gift she opened it and her face kind of falls and she goes oh an emulsion blender 
And I told her I remembered her talking about all the kitchen gadgets she wanted and I was so excited to give it to her She kept her cool but told me while she appreciated the thoughts She was a little upset that it wasn't jewelry. I was so confused So she explained that she felt anniversary should be more about romantic or sentimental gifts versus practical That she appreciated it greatly but couldn't lie to me that she did wish it had been the necklace She pointed out to me online. It was nothing fancy a $30 mushroom necklace I shared my woes with my friend and my friend thought it was hilarious that I was so inept and that he understood why my girlfriend was upset with her gifts. My girlfriend's best friend also got wind of the situation and has been ribbing me with telling my girlfriend to get back to the kitchen jokes, etc. My girlfriend and I are fine, but I know she was disappointed and she ended up buying the necklace herself a week after I gave her the blender. So am I the butthole for giving my girlfriend a practical gift Versus the necklace she wanted. Um, wow. Yeah, you're definitely the butthole. I'm sorry. Like, this one is so straightforward. She explicitly asked you for a necklace or a nice piece of jewelry. And you said, do you know what? No, let's get something that's the complete opposite. Not sentimental at all. A blender. Sweet. Exactly what I asked for. Thanks. I love that you said that you were so confused when she was sad that you got her a blender. You got her a blender. She asked for jewelry. Are you dumb? I know you explained at the start of this post that you're a lesbian in order to get away from the typical man comments but this isn't typical man this is worse than that this is like reality tv or literally scripted comedy shows where men are just shown to be stupid this is really really bad and by the way i don't think you're necessarily being mean-spirited but for you to not understand why your girlfriend would be upset here it's just weird i've got to say am i the butthole for forcing out a fart to get my mum to stop asking my girlfriend invasive questions in front of the whole family I know what it sounds like, but I swear it's a desperate situation. So I, a 23 year old man, have been with my 22 year old girlfriend for seven months. She has a visible scar on her neck and she hates to be asked about it and hates to tell the story behind it. Believe it or not, even I don't know the story yet, but I'm waiting until she's comfortable to share. She's met my family several times. And of course, mum and aunts asked her about her scar like three or four times in just a couple of hours then at dinner, then during movie time, etc. It got bothersome and my girlfriend looked uncomfortable and I could just tell that the question itself was bringing her sadness. I told my mum to stop asking such invasive questions about the scar and every time she'd say, okay, I won't ask, I promise. But then she would turn around and do it again. On Mother's Day, my girlfriend and I attended dinner at mum's. We were sitting in the living room and my mum goes to ask my girlfriend about the scar again. This time with a bigger audience because the whole family was there. My girlfriend said she'd rather not talk about it. But mum kept cornering her and kept asking her in a yes, no form. I was sitting next to my mum and I forced a loud fart in an attempt to take pressure and attention away from my girlfriend and get mum to switch her focus to something else. I was like, whoops, and the family started laughing. Mum turned to me and gave me a nasty stare. It got awkward, I'm not gonna lie, but I was desperate and I couldn't really yell at mum to stop and start a fight on Mother's Day, so I thought of doing this instead of making a scene. She pulled me into the kitchen and scolded me for what I did after I admitted that I did it intentionally. She called me childish and said that if I didn't want her to bring up my girlfriend's scar, then I should have said... But I did, I swear, like a hundred times. Anyways, my girlfriend and I left and my girlfriend couldn't stop laughing in the car. Unfortunately, my dad was upset too, saying I behaved poorly and childishly in front of the extended family and he told me to grow up. So, am I the butthole? Well, hey, I can think of a few less embarrassing ways to get someone's attention, but look, it worked and you're not the butthole. I love it actually. It's kind of crazy. You're using your butthole to not be the butthole. That is unbelievable. Am I the butthole for arguing with my husband's doctor and acting like a Karen because they wouldn't listen? My husband has a sore foot. No injury or medical condition that would explain the pain, but he hasn't been able to walk properly for about a week. Being the absolute pain in my butt that he is, he's refused to go to the doctors until today. Apparently, he preferred to just pop paracetamol and complain to me. It's gotten progressively more swollen and misshapen looking, and today it's gone a funny color and he can't put any weight on it. So I called our GP who has sent him to the walking clinic at our local hospital. We finally get seen and the doctor refused to even examine it. 
He told him without even looking at the foot that it was a sprain and he wasn't going to prescribe him any painkillers, so not to ask. Then he started demonstrating some kind of exercises that involved going up and down on tiptoes and flexing the toes. I asked if he would please just look at it, as it's gone nearly black in some spots and looks similar to how my wrist looked when I broke it a few years ago. He huffed at me and asked where my medical degree was from. It put my back up and I demanded to see another doctor or his senior. I was the butthole here because it wasn't me being treated. So I get he thought I was a pushy cow. Husband wouldn't say boo to a goose in medical situations though. And he would have accepted the doctor's instructions without any questions about actually needing to be examined. The doctor left and we heard him outside the cubicle telling the senior doctor that they have a confrontational spouse who thinks her WebMD searching qualifies her to instruct real doctors on how to practice medicine. He also states that he suspects my husband of exaggerating to get opiates by the time the other doctor arrives i'm seething and i lay out exactly what went on and explain that i only want someone to look at the foot before sending us away he looks q x-rays and mri the good painkillers and a walking boot cast thing with potential to need surgery because he's got seven stress fractures in that foot probably from running Admittedly, they were worse than they needed to be because he didn't get any treatment when it first started to hurt. Then a second doctor and someone from the hospital admin come and apologize for the first doctor and ask if we want to make a formal complaint. So I did because the outcome of his not listening to the patient or family could have been worse. My husband, though, didn't. My husband said later that the first doctor may well get sacked because of me complaining, and I should have left it because no real harm was done. So was it a butthole move to complain? I don't usually have Karen tendencies, but he was just so patronizing and dismissive, and I kept thinking, what if it was a young mother with a sick baby, and he dismissed that? Not everyone would stand their ground, and there could be some really serious consequences. No, you're definitely not the butthole here, and you're also not a Karen. In my opinion, Karens are people that complain about things that do not need to be complained about. Whereas in this situation, you're complaining about a real health issue. And you're right, if you hadn't complained, your husband wouldn't have known he had seven stress fractures. I couldn't agree more. If this doctor is doing this with your husband's foot, imagine what would happen if it was something really, really serious that could potentially endanger someone's lives. It's bad practice from the doctor, and it's good stuff from you. Definitely not the butthole. Am I the butthole for going? Going off on my wife after she made a sex sign to keep my mum from knocking on our bedroom door. So, I've been married to my wife for four years. We have a medium sized apartment. For the last two months, my mother has been staying off and on in our guest room. My dad recently passed away, and it's hard for her to live in their house alone, so I've been letting her stay with us. My wife and her have never particularly got along but I expected her to understand why it's important to me that she overlooked this just for a little while. I mean, she lost her husband of 40 years. She's fragile and I really want to be able to do what I can to make her feel better. My mum's presence has changed our routine a little bit, mainly our nighttime routine. She'll usually come knock on our door to talk and my wife hates this, partially because it interrupts our intimacy. Usually when she's over, we just don't make love. Now this past week, I noticed my mum hasn't been coming in at night, so we had normal nighttime habits. Yesterday, my mum pulled me aside and told me that the sign I let my wife put on the door at night was disgusting and not something she ever needed to know. She also said that she was very hurt that I don't want to speak to her since I'm all she has left now. I told her I had no idea what she was talking about. She said the sign about sex. I still had no idea and talked to my wife about it when she got home. She admitted to it. She said that she made a sign to keep my mum out of our hair at night. On the sign was written, Please do not disturb unless you want to see me screwing your son. She thought it was funny and necessary, but I was mad about it. I took the sign, crumpled it up, and tossed it in the garbage. I then went off on my wife about how inappropriate and embarrassing this was. She told me it was my fault we needed this, and it's just a joke. I slept on the couch last night, and she is still angry at me. So, am I the butthole? Yeah, I guess the sign's quite funny in a crude way. I'll give you that. But in this context, knowing full well that your partner's mum's husband has just died and she is left all alone, a partner of 40 years, by the way, that's just horrible. I'm sorry. Suck it up. 
Like, you can't have sex for a week or two. Deal with it. It's not the end of the world. Come on. This is just throwing it back in her face. And yeah, it's horrible. You know what's crazy is that on Reddit, this is probably the first time I ever disagree with Reddit. Everyone on the comments is saying that you, OP, are the butthole. Like, you shouldn't have gone off on your wife and you should set boundaries with your mum. I actually fundamentally disagree. She's been staying at your gaff for like two weeks. Can your wife not just deal with that for a couple of weeks? It's not the end of the world, is it? Be nice to someone whose husband of 40 years has just died. Come on. Okay, sorry to go on about this, but I'm just reading through the comments to, to understand if I'm just in the wrong here. Some people are saying that your mum could come and talk to you at any other point in the day and it doesn't have to be at night. That I agree with. I'm not going to lie. But showing some compassion to a woman who's just lost her husband of 40 years, surely that's that's the easiest thing to do. Let me know in the comments. Interested to hear your thoughts. Am I the butthole for not waking my husband up for his 5 a.m. walk? So, for the past month, my husband has been waking up at 5 every morning to have a walk. These walks would take about two hours. A quick side note to mention that this is new. He's not trying to lose weight. He's pretty thin. He's not athletic by nature, nor has sports interests or hobbies. In fact, he used to hate doing any type of sports. I'm happy for him, since it's an overall positive thing. But yesterday, he came home in the evening after working for long hours, then stayed up late playing on his phone. I went to bed at 10 after getting done with the mess and everything. I woke up to him the next day, yelling at me at 7 a.m., asking me why I didn't wake him up for his 5 a.m. walk. He said he missed it, and I'm responsible for that. I was so confused. I said that first of all, he always wakes up by setting his alarm. Why should I be expected to wake him up this time? He yelled that he forgot to set his alarm. I said, so what? It's no big deal. It's not like he missed an important meeting or something. But he got more angry and said that those walks help improve his health and restore his energy, helping him feel better. I made a comment about how missing one walk won't hurt, but he unloaded on me, yelling about how I was trying to prevent him from doing his hobby for some unknown reason. I told him he was sorely mistaken, even though I admit that those 5am daily walks around the Veterans Park are weird, but also his reaction? I really thought it was over the top. He stormed off and went to the shower, saying I'd ruined his entire day. When he got out, he started avoiding and ignoring me. Even when I talked to him directly, he went to work and refused to respond to my calls. Really, I'm at a loss. Like, maybe it was something I said about his walks, but I really don't know. He's sulking non-stop as of now, and I'm literally about to lose my mind. Guys, am I the butthole? Yeah, this is the easiest not the butthole I've ever seen. I'm sorry. Your husband is the one walking at 5 a.m., not you. He usually sets alarms, not you. Obviously not your fault. It's a bit embarrassing, actually. He's clearly just taking out his anger on you because he failed to wake up. Embarrassing on his behalf. Set an alarm, pal. Not that hard. Am I the butthole for showing the kids what their dad did? My husband was staying at the hospital for some health issues. After he got out, he started wetting the bed every few nights. We talked to the doctor about it and they gave us meds, but they'd take time. So they suggested that my husband use adult diapers temporarily. He said no, and since he's too sick to do anything, I'm the one having to clean up every time. I grew tired of it. He just kept wetting the bed and not even considering diapers. Yesterday morning was my final straw. I saw that he'd wet the bed again and I just kind of went off. I kept talking, but it's like he wasn't hearing me at all because he just kept staring at the wall. Our kids heard the fuss and came in asking what was going on. I showed them the state the bed and sheets were in and said, See, your dad keeps wetting the bed and throwing a tantrum when asked to wear a diaper. They stared and my husband looked shocked. He had them leave the room, then said I shouldn't have done that. In my defense, I wanted to defend myself because I thought it was unfair when the kids accused me of yelling at their dad for no reason. He said I humiliated him in front of the kids and made him feel terrible. I told him he could be less embarrassed and feel less terrible when he stops wetting the bed like a child. He started crying, saying he's struggling with his health and said that I was being cruel and descendant towards him. Now I'm trying to turn the kids against him as well as shame him in front of them. My sister visited and when I vented to her about it, she said she understood, but I was still in the wrong for getting the kids involved. 
I'm feeling conflicted on whether I did the right thing, maybe to get him to understand how this has been affecting me as well. So, am I the butthole for this? See, this one I'm not sure about. I feel like everyone kind of sucks here a little bit. On the one hand, your husband is in the wrong here. Look, suck it up. It's embarrassing, I get it, but wear a diaper. Or don't wear a diaper, but go and sleep in a different bed and clean your own sheets. Like wetting the bed often and then having your wife clean it up, that's very, very poor. I say all that. On the other hand, I don't think, OP, that you had to get the kids involved in this. I do agree. It's embarrassing enough for him, but you could have just said to him, one-on-one, -on -one, spoken to him and said from the heart how bad this is making you feel and how difficult you're finding it. I don't think you had to get the kids involved. What do you reckon, guys? I kind of feel like both parties could and should have handled this a little bit better. Am I the butthole for walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mum standing there with her luggage? I am a 30-year-old woman and I don't have the best relationship with my husband's mum. Since day one, she tried to make remarks and compare me to her. She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do sometimes even copying me like that one time when she literally dyed her hair purple just like mine and when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked she actually blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her so anyways my husband and i took two weeks off work to go visit some places out of the country tourism in other words the thing is i was the one who saved up for and arranged the trip my husband was responsible for booking the tickets my husband's mum wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums when I said no. She called, texted, sent people to talk to me into letting her come, even threatening to call the police and make some complaints up to get us to stay if she can't come. My husband said we should just take her, but I told him he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place. He gave me an ultimatum. He said he wouldn't go if she can't come, and I told him I'd gladly call his bluff, which made him take back his words and say, fine, I'll tell her to stop it because we won't take her. From then on, things on her side got quieter, suspiciously quieter. The day of the trip came and we got to the airport at 2 p.m. My husband was walking ahead of me and was looking left and right like he was looking out for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He led me to the waiting area and the first thing I saw was his mum standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spots. I felt a cold wave washing over me and I was fuming inside. Her and my husband hugged and that is when I quietly turned around and started walking towards the exits. My husband followed me, shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me, but I told him off the harshest way possible. He tried to say I was overreacting and that his mum was there anyway and I should let it go and not mess the trip up for us. I told him that he and his mum could still go, but that I was going home. I went home and sobbed into my dog's fur for several minutes. It turned out he booked her a ticket without me knowing. An hour later, he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful I was to walk out, go home and ruin the trip last minute. I told him he caused this to happen. He said that I was being so hard on his mum. It was ridiculous. I just refused to fight anymore. But he kept on berating me. Then he called my family to tell them that the trip was cancelled because of me. My family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself. And I should have sucked it up and done my best to enjoy it. Did I really overreact? Um, are you kidding? Overreact? I would have reacted even stronger than you. Sorry, you're meant to be going on holiday just with your partner. You know, a couple's holiday. And out of nowhere, out of the blue... His mum is there? I can think of nothing worse. Listen, his mum is bad enough. I think we can all agree. But the fact that he has secretly invited her, saying to you, oh, don't worry, she won't come. Sorry. Like, what a joke of a man that guy is. The reason you're sobbing so much when you get home, in my opinion, is less about the holiday in isolation and more about the fact that you're now questioning whether you need to be with this man or not. Sorry, that's just what I think. In my opinion, I'm long gone. Am I the butthole for leaving my boyfriend in Arizona after he pretended to push me over the edge of the ground? Grand Canyon. I just went to the Grand Canyon with my boyfriend. I'm 150% afraid of heights. Don't go near windows, railings type of scared. Phobia in the full sense of the words. Because of this, I didn't want to go in the first place. But it's a famous destination, so I figured it was worth facing my fears. I had multiple conversations with my boyfriend about my fears. At least five separate in-depth convos about how scared I was about having a panic attack around strangers. I have a long history of panic attacks. He assured me he'd help me maintain my distance from ledges and calm me down if I got overwhelmed or scared. We just went. 
We plan to do a tour then go out by ourselves in the following days Well on day one on our tour We stopped at a scenic lookout to take pictures and he decided it would be funny to grab me and pretend to try and push me over the edge of the cliff I immediately freaked out and unsurprisingly had a panic attack all in front of our group while the poor guy tried to calm me down I'm not proud of how I acted, but I'll tell you it wasn't pretty I was sobbing and yelling that he was cruel for doing this that he knew I was terrified and he was evil for using that against me He was yelling back that it was a joke I was taking it too seriously and to get over it because I was embarrassing myself and him Which to be fair I was it was quite embarrassing. I think I was the butthole in this next part I told him he was a horrible person and his ex was right to leave him Context his ex left him because she thought he was immature But she left right before a high profile family event and embarrassed him among his family He yelled that was screwed up to say and in hindsight I think he's right especially since it was in public The tour guide separated us and took me back to their office and I have no idea what my boyfriend did after that He wasn't in our hotel when I got my stuff and I got a flight to my parents stay And i've been staying here while I figure out if this relationship is still alive We live together and work for the same company So if this is over my life is going to get very messy The thing is we have a ton of mutual friends and I have half of them texting calling me to say i'm overreacting and being a psycho idiot Besides my three closest friends. I haven't told anyone anything But because they all know him too Everyone has heard some version of events and they're making it seem like i'm leading a pr campaign against him I don't have social media though and I haven't said anything to anyone besides my best friends They're particularly mad that I left him in arizona. I don't think what I did was worth all the hate i'm getting I left him the rental car and hotel room and I took an uber to the airport I paid for everything myself including our hotel room and I left a note in the room telling him I was going to my parents I feel like people don't understand, but there are so many people saying the same thing that i'm starting to question myself So am I the butthole not a chance? That is one of the worst things you could possibly do to someone that has a fear of heights I'm, sorry But it's not embarrassing to have a panic attack like that when you're that scared and your own boyfriend is messing around What is embarrassing is your boyfriend's actions You actually handled this extremely maturely and well and I don't think you were the butthole for even one second in the situation It was a horrible thing to do and you let him know your boyfriend is the one that should be profusely apologizing here And I wouldn't even blame you if you did split up with him Am I the butthole for telling my girlfriend i'll keep honoring my best friend's dying wish even if it makes her uncomfortable My late best friend and I knew each other since we were little We were next door neighbors and always played together We even went to the same kindergarten primary school and middle high school together one day during our sophomore year We started talking about how most of our classmates had started dating We obviously weren't okay with that and decided to get one up on all of them by getting married as a joke I made her a fake ring and she gave me her scrunchie a few weeks later a drunk driver hit her She sustained multiple injuries and was in the icu for two months The doctor told her family that her survival chances are slim in the only time I talked to her before she died She made me promise to always visit her on our wedding anniversary and to wear her scrunchie during the visits Four years ago when I started dating my girlfriend I told her about it and asked if she was okay with it She commented about how sweet and nice the tradition was and told me she was perfectly fine with it Today was the 10th anniversary and I took the day off Before my girlfriend went to work, she told me it's time to put this tradition to rest and move on because it was starting to get pathetic that I still wear a dead girl scrunchie to celebrate a fake marriage that we had 10 years ago. I was furious at her comments because she wasn't just a dead girl. She was my best friend and like a sister to me. We grew up and did everything together. I told my girlfriend a long time ago that we never had a sexual or romantic relationship and that our wedding was just a joke. It's not like I talk about her or keep her photos around the house or anything like that. The only times I've talked about her to my girlfriend is when I told her if she was okay with the tradition or if she asked me about her when i told her that i'll keep honoring my best friend's dying wish even if it made her uncomfortable she left for work angry at me and hasn't come back home yet 
All right, first off, definitely not the butthole. I believe in sophomore year, you're about 15 or 16 years old. Americans, let me know if I'm right there. That is old enough, obviously, to have an unbelievable amount of memories of someone. It's not as if this person died when they were three or four. But like, this is OP's best friend for that period of time. They mean a lot to them, clearly. If your girlfriend sees this tradition as something more than the silly thing that it is, you know, wearing a scrunchie, like who really cares? Then I think she's got problems of her own. It's just a nice tradition and a nice way to remember your friend that was so tragically killed. Am I the butthole for asking my fiance to consider wearing contacts for our wedding? I, a 23 year old man and my fiance, a 21 year old woman are engaged and getting married in a couple of weeks. She has pretty bad vision, so needs contacts or glasses in order to function. For some context, I'm the one that wants a wedding with our family and friends. She always just wanted a courthouse wedding. She compromised and we're doing a wedding with friends and family. Also, she showed her wedding dress to my mum, who reacted negatively, which really hurt my fiance. My mum apologized to her the next day before I even got a chance to say something to her, but still. Also, I messed up and didn't consult her before ordering my suit for the big day. So much has already gone wrong here. What? For the first two years of our relationship, she preferred contacts 100% of the time, then developed a little sty in her right eye that made it uncomfortable and unhealthy to wear contacts for multiple days. So she switched to glasses. It still hasn't gone away, but it's gotten significantly smaller. She still wears glasses to try and not aggravate it. On a couple of occasions, like getting nice pictures taken or a significant holiday, she switched back to contacts on her own to look nicer. She knows I prefer her in contacts, and I thought she preferred that look as well. Cut to a couple of days ago. I ask her if she's going to wear contacts or glasses for our wedding. She says she's leaning strongly towards glasses. I stuff down my surprise and just go, okay, and move on. I couldn't get over it though. And her and I have established on multiple occasions how much we value open and honest communication, even if it's hurtful. Last night, I asked if she would reconsider wearing contacts. She became quite offended and said I just destroyed her self-image since I'm clearly implying she looks better in contacts, but hasn't really worn contacts in almost a year. Also, mentioning that now means that if she chooses to wear glasses, she's going to be self-conscious. I emphasize that it's totally up to her what she wears, but it was weighing on me, and I didn't want to play mind games or hide my feelings, so I told her. Because of this, and all the stuff I outlined in context above, she feels like she didn't get to have an opinion on what I wear, but everything about what she's wearing has been criticized by me and or my family so am i the butthole sorry i'm pretty much just laughing here because this is the most open and shut case i've ever seen of a butthole ever like this guy i'll be honest might be the biggest butthole i've ever seen on this subreddit it started badly and it got even worse my friend what like i get it there's being open and honest and there's also just being rude like saying you look bad in glasses can you not wear them on your wedding day is nuts you gotta compromise come on what is that i just can't get over how badly this story even started in the first place your mum reacted horribly to the wedding dress you chose your suit without her knowing what is this is just oh this is horrible but just don't get married guys i don't know you but reading this don't get married am i the butthole for asking my aunt what part of the penis was required to operate a toy so i a 26 year old woman am expecting my first daughter with my husband who is 29 in september i grew up in a moderately religious household with pretty strictly defined gender roles As in, since I was a girl, I had chores around the house, while my younger brother did not have to do anything. I don't talk to my parents for a variety of reasons, going on five years now, so they do not know I'm pregnant. Both my aunts and grandparents were very supportive of me leaving my household, and as such, have been my main family. Being six months pregnant now, people have started to give gifts, and I'm very grateful for them. We've decided that we don't want our daughter to be surrounded by pink everything with only girl things. So we've made a conscious effort to include traditionally boy outfits and toys like dinosaurs and cars. We've told people that any gender items would be accepted. And if it's getting too much pink, we've gone out to balance a bit, getting a green jacket or something. My younger aunt has taken great offense to this because boys are boys and girls are girls. And she is a very verbal and loud person and has let us know several times her opinions. She has two boys. At my baby shower, my older aunt gifted us a book called Goodnight Construction Sites and a Little Stuffed Truck. My younger aunt went on a tirade about how we're somehow making our daughter trans and not allowing her to be a girl. 
and she's a loud person so of course her saying this was more like a yell and in front of my very liberal in-laws who were very supportive of our choice pregnancy hormones took over and i grabbed the toy gave it to my younger aunt and asked her what part of the penis was needed to operate this toy truck she yelled that's not what she meant and left the rest of the baby shower went fine but it was a bit awkward after since then she's been blowing up facebook where a bunch of people agree with her that i am making my daughter trans and have been telling me that i was a butthole the rest of my family think what we're doing is fine but that i shouldn't have handled it that way so was i a butthole okay well first of all let's just clear up that anyone who thinks that you're making your daughter trans is actually so dumb it's unbelievable that's the first point that we have to make clear secondly you parent your child exactly how you want to it's your child at the end of the day and look i get it people have different opinions that's absolutely fine the world would be boring otherwise but no you're not making your daughter trans you're just parenting your daughter in the way you want to sounds like you're a great parent by the way keep doing you your aunt is dumb am i the butthole for telling my mother-in-law no ring no opinion whenever she gets involved in my marriage okay so this seems kind of silly and i want to start by saying that i a 25 year old woman really 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 like my mother-in-law but she's intrusive as frick like she tried to get involved in issues that are none of her concern while her son a 32 year old man and i were dating she tried to get in between during every disagreement be it major or little. To be honest, I had a hard time setting boundaries. And with my husband's attitude, it made it almost impossible to get her to give me the space I need. Especially when she says she's just trying to help. Now, after marriage, nothing changed. She would get in between me and her son in every problem we have. Not just this, but also give opinions and comments on things like the house, job, car, insurance basically marital issues that only concern me and my husband i thought about ways to tell her off but i didn't want to come off as harsh and aggressive so i came up with this line whenever she tries to get involved in our marriage i would tell her no ring no opinion and in response she'd become upset and get offended on sunday my husband and i went over to her house and had dinner my mother-in-law then out of the blue brought up mine and my husband's decision to have kids and kept insisting to know when we were going to start trying and kept giving suggestions on when it's best to start. I felt so caught off guard and embarrassed, but I didn't even engage or talk about it. I just said, sorry, mother-in-law, no ring, no opinion. The table went quiet and everyone looked at her to see her reaction. She looked sort of embarrassed and kept moving in her chair till she excused herself to the bathroom. My husband glared at me and he looked super angry. He then went to talk to her and it turned awkward. After we went home, he started berating me for what I said to his mum. He said it was rude and disrespectful. I told him that his mum has overstepped by commenting and giving opinions on marital matters that only concern us. He yelled at me saying, the frick you want me to do? Disown her? Really? Think about how this would make you look in front of the family. Then he went to call his dad, who was also upset with me, saying I embarrassed his wife for no reason whatsoever and that I needed to get rid of this horrible attitude of mine. So, am I the butthole? Did I go too far? Okay, interesting one there. I do agree with you. Overall, she is a bit too intrusive and I understand why you're saying what you're saying and you want her to, you know, take a back seat and not get involved in every little marital discussion that happens between you and your husband. She doesn't need to be involved in that. However, I think the way you went about it was a little too curt, to be fair. You didn't really need to say just that. And I get it. Look, it's obviously become tiring and she gets involved in every little thing and you're fed up of trying to reason with her, but you need to be polite. it's, It's hard and it's easy for me to say that sitting here in my bedroom but you can't just say one little short rude sentence let's be fair is quite rude to your mother-in-law and think that that's okay in my opinion it's a controversial one guys let me know in the comments for me i think you just have to show a little bit more respect it's annoying i understand that but just try and reason with her a little bit more i would say that the fact that your husband also thinks it's okay that your mother-in-law is getting involved this much is a little bit weird don't you think like if anything i would have thought that your husband would be like mum can you just like be quiet this is my wife i'm not in a relationship with you leave us to it it's weird that he is the one that's like no let her speak about every little topic i don't know just my opinion the whole point of this subreddit is that i want to hear yours guys if you're watching on youtube get in the comments let me know your thoughts anyway guys that is going to do it for this special extended episode of r slash am i the butthole three hours 
of Am I the Jerk stories. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did. Um, I personally sat there and listened to the whole thing. So I hope you did too. If you are still watching and listening, then fair play to you and your family. I rate the commitments. You know what? Get in the comments and type blue is the color. And that's how I'll know who's really watched the whole way through.